ask that you listen attentively to the following safety announcement. We are pleased to offer you a smoke-free environment. Patrons are also reminded that eating and drinking are not allowed inside the auditorium. The use of flash photography or any other recording device is strictly prohibited. In an unlikely event of an emergency, we ask that you make your way in an orderly manner to the nearest exit. These are located to the front right of the stage and to the top of the stairs. We ask that you take the time now to identify these exits. Once through these exits, proceed to the nearest master point, which are situated east of the building on the playing field, or to the front western end of the main building. Once at the master point, please await further instructions from members of our crisis and emergency team. We thank you for your attention and patience, and do enjoy your stay at the college. Alright, let us now, I would like to invite Comrade Joanne Phillips, who would lead us in a word of prayer. Can we all stand? Good evening, comrades all. Eternal and ever wise Father. Father, we thank you for a safe arrival at this point this evening, Lord. Father, we ask your presence here this evening to guide, guard, and protect us, to open our intellects this evening, Lord, that we may learn something from these proceedings, that we may be strengthened by the life of Sheikh Guevara. Father and friend, we ask you to bless the ties that bind Cuba and Trinidad and Tobago. We ask you to bless the ambassador and also our president general and all leaders of the various trade unions. Father and friend, each and every one of us here this evening, Lord, our families, our homes this our Lord. Pass by and bless each of us individually and collectively. Take charge again of, these evening, of this evening's proceedings and may we leave here this evening more educated than we came there, Lord. This and all other mercies we ask in your most holy name we pray. Amen. The national anthem of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. remain standing for the national anthem of the Revolutionary Republic of Cuba. Thank you very much. You can all have your seat now. Each and every one of you all came out here this afternoon, and I would like you to give yourselves a round of applause for being here with us. You could have been doing so many other things. This particular event is being co-hosted by the Oilfield Workers Trade Union, 
and the Cuban Embassy. So I would just like to, of course, recognize the ambassador for Cuba, Comrade, because we call him Comrade Ambassador. Comrade Ambassador Guillermo Vasquez Moreno, let us give the ambassador a round of applause. And with us, I would just like to recognize the ambassador of the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, who is also with us, and we would hear a little bit more in depth from her, and that is comrade, another comrade ambassador, Ambassador Koromoto Godoy. And of course, allow me to recognize our first, the first vice president of the Oil Free Workers Trade Union, Comrade Carlton Gibson. I saw him. Oh, yeah. And we have our second vice president, Comrade Sati Gajala is with us. Our executive treasurer is here, Comrade Chandrasekh Ramsey. And of course, all the members of the Blue Shirt Army, welcome. Let us recognize the various members and officers who travel from very far, comrades coming all the way from Forest and from Point Fourteen and so on, making their way to this very important event. I want to also recognize the trade, other members of the trade union movement who are here with us. I would like to recognize Comrade Christopher Henry, President of the Steelworkers Union. Comrade Forbes, Secretary General of the Postal Workers Union. Comrade Benacio, Robert, Robert Benacio, President of the Industrial General and Sanitation Workers Union. Comrade Michael Prentice, uh, President of the Amalgamated Workers Union. Uh, of course, uh, Militant President of the Banking Insurance and General Workers Union, Comrade Vincent Cabrera. Uh, well, I see Com uh, from Communication Workers Union, he's here with us, Comrade Austin, Austin Lou. And of course, let me recognize the activists coming from the Movement for Social Justice. Several activists are here. Let us recognize them. And members of the Cuban Brigade, I believe, from some of the doctors, nurses, they are here with us to, well, to share this evening with us. Born in June 14, 1928, in Rosario, Argentina. What an incredible human being. This human being was taken from this world. Yesterday would have been 50 years ago, in 1967 in Bolivia, a great light indeed was taken from humanity. But what is incredible about that light, and this is why we're here this evening 50 years later, is that light did not die in Bolivia in 1967. Today we are going to sh sh sort of reflect a bit on the impact of the life of Ernesto Che Guevara. I was fortunate, could have been about a year, two years ago, to have been to Santa Clara and visited the mausoleum of this great commandant, this great revolutionary. And it was, it was quite a, a personal journey for me, a deep and personal journey, to be there in the mausoleum, to see the last resting place of Ernesto Che Guevara. And I remember thinking that here is a very selfless human being who gave his life, sacrificed his life, sacrificed all of his life in, in the name of freedom, but in the name of humanity. And one of the things that really stands out to me when I think of Che is that famous interview when they ask him, you know, what makes a great revolutionary? And he said, love, love for people. And when you look at the life, even before he left Mexico, with Fidel and others. When he was on his motorbike going through both first Argentina and then the rest of Latin America, what he saw was extreme exploitation by US imperialism. He didn't learn it as an academic student. He didn't read it in a book. He was seeing it with his own eyes. And that transformed this young man to become a true deep revolutionary. And to think he died, when he died, he was only 39 years old. 39. 
He would have been in his late 20s when he would have left Mexico. He would have been in his mid-20s when he went off to Guatemala. A lot of people are not uh, familiar with the experience that Che would have had in Guatemala. At that time, there was the Guatemalan Revolution, which was in about 1952. And the US-backed coup that took place in Guatemala in 1954, Che was there. He was there when they invaded Guatemala and destroyed that revolution. So he saw the, the, the threat. He saw what imperialism can do to ordinary people. And he saw what imperialism can do to a revolution. So we are here today to look at his life. But we want to do something else even a little more special, like an extra icing on the cake, if you may, as we reflect on his life and the impact. Also on the 19th of October in 1983, another great light, another great light was lost. And I'm talking about none other than Maurice Bishop. A lot of people forget already. In 1983, this great revolutionary, this great human being, was gunned down, like Che. And so as we reflect on the impact, the life and impact of Che Guevara, we can't do that without touching on the life of Maurice Bishop and the Grenadian Revolution. So that is what this evening is about. And as we go into today's program, this evening's program, I want us to first, before I bring up the entire panel and have the various speakers, I just want to share two videos with our audience. I think they have it lined up and they're... Just the two music videos. Huh? No, not the, no, not that one. The one, two others, yeah. Not that specific one. I, I'm saving that one for another moment. No, not that one. The other, yeah. La historia se habla de un viejo niño de sí, pero mi historia es difícil. No voy a hablarles de un hombre común. Hay la historia de un ser de otro mundo, de un animal de galaxia. Es una historia que tiene que ver con el curso de la vía láctea. Es una historia enterrada. Es sobre un ser de la nada.
I believe there's a second one. Yeah. This afternoon, this evening, uh, well, before I get into the panel, I was informed that the first part of the security briefing did not indicate exactly where the restrooms are. So those are, let me double check, 
downstairs to the far right. Um, exit, major one, is to my left, your right. And to the back of the auditorium, there is one to the, to my left, your, well, when you turn around, it'll be your left anyway, right? <laughs> okay, now let's get into the, this afternoon's program. And the way we want to do this, as I said earlier, it's about reflection. So we have a, what we call a, a power panel who will be sharing their experiences. And, but we also want it to be interactive meaning they will share and immediately we will get straight into comments and questions coming from the audience. And I think we're really lucky to have a very powerful panel. Um, but I, I would like to bring on stage the, all of the persons who will be speaking this afternoon. And please join me as I call them up for us to recognize. Two have already been recognized. Let me invite the ambassador for Cuba to come on the stage. Comrade Ambassador Guillermo Vasquez, along with, as long with the Ambassador for Venezuela, Comrade Coroboto Godoy, and the yeah, translation, Naima, translator, Naima, who would assist. Let me invite us, if, yeah? Now, so they will, in particular, there'll be a sort of opening remark, remarks by the Cuban Ambassador. And the panelists who will engage in this sort of deep reflection start off with no stranger to any of us in this room. And certainly, even as this is uh, broadcast throughout the world, I'm sure it, uh, is no stranger to many, many activists, political, social, trade unionists across the region and across the world. And I think it would be very, uh, we are very fortunate to have him with us this evening to share and for, to hear his reflections on the impact of Che himself, been, uh, we could consider definitely a revolutionary and have been an active radical activist for all, all of his uh, life, even starting from very, very young. Um, that is none other in case you're wondering who I'm speaking of. I think we all know. I'm speaking of none other than Comrade David Abdullah. The other panelist is someone who has been involved in social movements for a long time, but played a very critical role in the Grenadian Revolution. I, it's really an honor to have her here with us this afternoon, and I'm really intrigued to hear her reflections, herself having been so involved in the Grenadian Revolution. I think it is a revolution that we in the Caribbean do not pay enough attention to it, as to what was it really about, um, and the impact that it would have had, and the possibilities that sort of await in the Caribbean with the ushering of the Grenadian Revolution. And I think this evening, in the context of the uh, life of Che, I think reflecting on the life of Maurice Bishop and the Grenadian Revolution is also very relevant, and I would even dare say current. And I think we're lucky to have this person who was involved intimately in terms of uh, building that revolution. I'm speaking of none other Another person who many of us know, I know her from a very young age reading. Um, she's a writer as well. Um, I'm speaking of none other than the infamous Merle Hodge. <laughs> but one may argue, okay, we have Comrade Abdullah, we have Merle Hodge, but you know, those things happened in the past. Che died since 1967. Um, the Grenadian Revolution finished, uh, was ended abruptly in 1983, which was before I was born. <laughs> Only ready by that? <laughs> <laughs> but what about young people? And we couldn't have a panel like this reflecting on the impact and life of Che Guevara without a young person. And we have a young activist very involved in the MSJ Activist Council, but himself just recently, well, not recently, about a year ago or two years ago, two years ago, I attended a political education program in Brazil 
uh, organized by the Latinus uh, movement, which is one of the most uh, powerful social movements in Latin America. I'm talking about comrade Kevon Agostini, who will share as a young man what is Jamie. Clearly building a fan club. <laughs> Right. Okay, so let me get started and um, please join me as I invite to welcome us to this very important discussion. And it really is when we consider where we are in the world right now with the rise of right wing nationalism, the rise of people like that crazy guy in the north, in North America, and the rise of several other right wing um, racist movements across the globe. And when we see the threats of the, that crazy guy, President of the United States, you see that imperialism is not just an academic definition of something. It is real, and it is a real threat in our time. So I'm, I think this is a very, very opportune moment to have this reflection. So let to start off things, please join me to welcome the Cuban ambassador, Comrade Ambassador Guillermo Vasquez Moreno, to bring us welcome. Compañeras y compañeros, Comrades. con emoción profunda asistimos a este encuentro para rendir homenaje a los protagonistas de una de las gestas internacionalistas de mayor significación, ejemplo de la lucha por la liberación de los pueblos oprimidos. With great emotion, we attend this event to pay tribute to the protagonist of one of the most important internationalist gestures. An example is of the struggle for the liberation of oppressed peoples. Conmemoramos hoy, junto a ustedes, el 50 aniversario de la caída en combate del guerrillero heroico ocurrida el 8 de octubre de 1967. Together, we commemorate today the 50th anniversary of the fall in combat of the heroic guerrilla, which occurred on October 8, 1967. La epopeya que escribiera el comandante Ernesto Che Guevara en Bolivia conmueve hoy a los hombres y mujeres sensibles de todo el mundo. The saga that wrote the commander Ernesto Che Guevara in Bolivia today moves the sensitive men and women around the world. Recorrer los parajes donde se debatió entre la vida y la muerte nos muestra su altruismo, la profundidad de sus convicciones, su estirpe, su dimensión revolucionaria e internacionalista. Touring the spots where life and death were debated shows us their altruism, the depth of their convictions, their lineage, their revolutionary and internationalist dimension. Fue un buscador incesante de las verdades y razones para avanzar en la construcción socialista. Además de jefe y guerrillero, fue un pensador revolucionario, un humanista, un intelectual que comprendió la necesidad de reflexionar sobre la revolución el socialismo, la sociedad y el hombre en Cuba. He was a relentless seeker of truth and reasons to advance in a socialist construction. In addition to being a leader and a guerrilla, he was a revolutionary thinker, a humanist, an intellectual, who understood the need to reflect on the revolution, socialism, society, and man in Cuba. Se involucró en nuestra historia como héroe del Granma la sierra, la invasión y la batalla de Santa Clara como uno de sus más preclaros y consagrados dirigentes y también como cronista y estudioso de la misma porque comprendió que la historia es una gran maestra. He became involved in our history as a hero of the grandma, the sierra, the invasion and battle of Santa Clara as one of his most prominent and consecrated leaders and also as a chronicler, a scholar, of the same, because he understood that history is a great teacher. El Che nos alertó de que el presente no podía convertirse en el retorno del pasado y que para construir el futuro teníamos que estar siempre unidos. Che warned us that the present could not become the return of the past and that to build the future we had to always be united. Como todos conocen, vivimos hoy en el mundo con una coyuntura caracterizada por crecientes amenazas a la paz, donde predominan poderosos intereses de dominación, se atenta contra la supervivencia de la especie humana 
donde el orden económico es injusto y excluyente. As we all know, today we live in a world characterized by growing threats to peace, dominated by powerful interests of domination, the survival of the human race, where the economic order is unjust and exclusive. Lo que sucede en América Latina es ejemplo de estos procesos colonizadores y en el caso de nuestro país expresan el marcado interés de una reconquista política y económica que abra paso al capitalismo brutal. What is happening in Latin America is an example of these colonizing processes, and in the case of our country, they express the marked interest of a political and economic, economic reconquest that opens the door to brutal capitalism. In the Hermana Republic of Venezuela, interests political try to impede the free exercise of the determination of the Venezuelans, and the United States applies unjust sanctions. But faithful to our vocation internationalist, Una vez más, reiteramos la disposición de Cuba al pueblo bolivariano y chavista y al gobierno que encabeza el compañero Nicolás Maduro Moro. In the sister republic of Venezuela, political interests try to prevent the free exercise of the determination of Venezuelans, and the United States applies unjust sanctions. But faithful to our internationalist vocation, once again, we reiterate the disposition of Cuba to the Bolivarian and Chavista people and to the government headed by Nicolás Maduro. Este tradicional homenaje al Che se efectúa en Cuba por primera vez sin la presencia física del líder histórico de la Revolución Cubana. This traditional tribute to Che is made in Cuba for the first time without the physical presence of the leading historian of the Cuban Revolution. Fidel y el Che estarán siempre presentes. Ambos emergen como sólidos, robustos e inquebrantables ejemplos para librar las batallas de estos tiempos por la soberanía y la paz de todos los pueblos del mundo, por la igualdad de todos los seres humanos, por la justicia social por la verdadera emancipación y por el socialismo. Fidel and Che will always be present. Both emerge as robust, solid, and unshakable examples to fight the battles of these times for the sovereignty and peace of all the peoples of the world, for the equality of all human beings, for social justice, for true emancipation, and for socialism. Decía Fidel in su histórico discurso en la velada solemne en memoria del comandante Ernesto Che Guevara en la Plaza de la Revolución, el 18 de octubre de 1967, y cito. Fidel said in his, in his historic speech at the solemn evening in memory of Commander Ernesto Che Guevara in Revolution Square on October 18, 1967, and I quote. Si queremos expresar cómo aspiramos que sean nuestros combatientes revolucionarios, nuestros militantes, nuestros hombres, Debemos decir sin vacilación de ninguna índole que sean como el Che. Si queremos expresar cómo queremos que sean los hombres de las futuras generaciones, debemos decir que sean como el Che. Si queremos decir cómo deseamos que se eduquen nuestros niños, debemos decir sin vacilación, queremos que se eduquen en el espíritu del Che. If we wish to express what we expect our revolutionary combatants, our militants, our people to be, we must say without hesitation, let them be like Che. If we wish to express what we want the people of future generations to be, we must say, let them be like Che. If we wish to say how we want our children to be educated, we must say without hesitation, we want them to be educated in Che's spirit. Si queremos un modelo de hombre, Un modelo de, de hombre que no pertenece a este tiempo, un modelo de hombre que pertenece al futuro, de corazón digo que ese modelo, sin una sola mancha en su conducta, sin una sola mancha en su actitud, sin una sola mancha en su actuación, ese modelo es el Che. If we want the model of a person, the model of a human being, who does not belong to our time, but to the future, I say from the depths of my heart that such a model, without a single stain on his conduct, without a single stain on his actions, without a single stain on his behavior, is Che. Ningún hombre como él en estos tiempos ha llevado a su nivel más alto el espíritu internacionalista proletario. No other person of our time has carried the spirits of proletarian internationalism to its highest possible level as Che did. Agregaba Fidel, 
Es por eso, compañeros y compañeras de la revolución, que nosotros debemos mirar con firmeza el porvenir y con decisión. Es por eso que debemos mirar con optimismo el porvenir y buscaremos siempre en el ejemplo de Che la inspiración, la inspiración en la lucha, la inspiración en la tenacidad, la inspiración en la intransigencia frente al enemigo y la inspiración en el sentimiento internacionalista. Fidel Are, it is for this reason, comrades of the revolution, that we must face the future with firmness and determination, with optimism, and in Che's example, we will always look for inspiration, inspiration in struggle, inspiration in ten tenacity, inspiration in intransigence towards the enemy, inspiration in internationalist feeling. Y finalizado, digamos al Che y con él a los héroes que combatieron y cayeron junto a él hasta la victoria siempre. He concluded, say to Che and to the heroes who fought and died with him ever onward to victory. Gracias compañeros por organizar este encuentro que significa el verdadero valor de la amistad y la hermandad entre los pueblos al recordar a un ejemplar ser humano, el guerrillero heroico. Thank you, comrades, for organizing this event, which signifies the true value of friendship and brotherhood among our peoples in remembering an exemplary human being, the heroic girl. Muchas gracias a todos. Thank you very much. Comrade Ambassador for Cuba, Comrade Guillermo Vasquez Moreno, for those welcoming words, powerful words indeed, to set the tone for this evening's reflection. Now we want to show a very short video of when Fidel read the letter, the farewell letter of Commandante Che. Vamos a leer una carta del compañero Ernesto Guevara. Fidel, siento que he cumplido la parte de mi deber que me ataba a la revolución cubana en su territorio y me despido de ti, de los compañeros de tu pueblo, que es ya mío. Otras tierras del mundo reclaman el concurso de mis modestos esfuerzos. En los nuevos campos de batalla llevaré la fe que me inculcaste, el espíritu revolucionario de mi pueblo, la tentación de cumplir con el más sagrado de los deberes, luchar contra el imperialismo donde quiera que esté. Digo una vez más que si me llega la hora definitiva bajo otros cielos, Mi último pensamiento será para este pueblo y especialmente para ti. Que no dejo a mis hijos ni mujer nada material y no me apena. Que no pido nada para ellos, pues el Estado les dará lo suficiente para vivir y educar. Hasta la victoria siempre, patria o muerte. Te abraza con todo fervor revolucionario que... Thank you, done by, of course, the Western media. And of, they were interviewing a guy called Felix Rodriguez, I believe. He would have been the CIA agent who was in Bolivia when Che was captured. And in the interview, he said that when they got the news that Che was captured, they got a bottle of scotch and started to celebrate. Because in their minds, they thought that was the death of a revolution the death of a revolutionary, and therefore the death of a revolution. I really wonder how they feel today when we look around and we see that the revolution is still very much alive, first and foremost in the hearts and in the contribution of the Cuban people. And when you look further afield, it's now, especially in that land, Bolivia, where he was captured, and the president, then president of Bolivia was happy only to have him killed to know that today Bolivia is run by a revolutionary president, Comrade Eva Morales. And then you think of Ecuador and Nicaragua, 
El Salvador. And I left the last special one when we consider the Bolivarian revolutionary people of Venezuela. <laughs> Commandante Hugo Chavez and of course, Nicolas Maduro. In other words, comrades all, we are living history right now. And to bring some reflections on the impact of Che, when we consider the Bolivarian revolution and the incredible contribution that it has made over the last few years, well, bringing us her reflection on the impact of Che in the context of the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela is none other than the Comrade Ambassador for, of Venezuela to Trinidad and Tobago, Trinidad and Tobago Comrade Koromoto Godoy. Buenas noches, compatriotas de la patria grande latinoamericana y caribeña. Good night to everyone here today from Latin America and the Caribbean. Hablar del Che Guevara es hablar de gestas heroicas, de construcción de nuevas sociedades, de lealtad y de compromiso revolucionario, y es hablar de luchas antiimperialistas y anticoloniales. To speak of Che Guevara is to speak of acts of heroism, the building of new societies, of loyalty and revolutionary commitment, as well as anti-imperialist and anti-colonial struggle. Hablar de la vigencia del pensamiento del Che es revisar la lucha de los pueblos que han sufrido el saqueo, la explotación, el maltrato y la pobreza por el desarrollo del capitalismo. Y es darnos cuenta de que la historia de esta lucha de los pueblos no ha cambiado en su esencia 50 años después del asesinato del Che. To speak of the endurance of Che's ideas is to call to mind the struggle of people who suffered pillage, exploitation, abuse, and poverty brought about by burgeoning capitalism. In doing so, we recognize that the story of the people's struggle has remained essentially the same even 50 years after Che's assass assassination. La historia de América Latina sigue marcada por los saqueos, la persecución de líderes sociales e indígenas y por las amenazas a la paz por parte del poder imperial, el policía del mundo. The story of Latin America continues to be scarred by pillage, the persecution of its social and indigenous leaders, and the threats to regional peace posed by the imperial power. Por eso el pensamiento del Che es y será faro luminoso en las luchas de los pueblos de nuestra región, de América Latina y el Caribe y del mundo, por su liberación y por la independencia definitiva. It is for this reason that Che's ideology is and ever will be a burning beacon to the people in their struggle here in Latin America and the Caribbean region and the world over on account of its freedom and absolute independence. El Che elaboró la teoría y acción de las luchas revolucionarias que lo convierte en un importante intelectual de la revolución. Che developed a theory and a practice for revolutionary struggles, which made him a leading intellectual of the revolution. Por eso, nuestra revolución bolivariana, el Che es ejemplo y presencia histórica determinante en la construcción del socialismo bolivariano del siglo XXI. In our Bolivarian revolution, Che is a paragon and a decisive historical presence in the building of the Bolivarian socialism in the 21st century. Todas las políticas sociales emprendidas por el comandante eterno de la Revolución Bolivariana, Hugo Chávez, y continuadas por el presidente obrero, Nicolás Maduro, están orientadas al cambio hacia una sociedad más justa, hacia la construcción del socialismo real y ético, el internacionalismo y la lucha permanente en contra del imperialismo, temas que son constantes en el pensamiento del comandante Ernesto Che Guevara. All social policies launched by Commander Chavez and maintained by the workers, President Nicolás Maduro, are designed to effect transformation to a more just society, the building of genuine and ethical socialism, the promotion of internationalism, and the enduring struggle against imperialism, topics that are ever present in the philosophy of Ernesto Che Guevara. Acerca del Che Guevara y la unidad latinoamericana, se debe subrayar en principio su propia identificación como patriota latinoamericano. When speaking of Che Guevara and Latin American unity, his own identity as a Latin American patriot must be underscored from the beginning. 
en su intervención de diciembre del año 1964 al hablar en nombre de Cuba ante la Asamblea General de la Organización de las Naciones Unidas, el Che dijo, In December 1964, speaking on behalf of Cuba in an address to the UN General Assembly, he said, He nacido la Argentina, no es un secreto para nadie. Soy cubano y también soy argentino. Y si no se ofenden las ilustrísimas señorías de Latinoamérica, me siento tan patriota de Latinoamérica, de cualquier país de Latinoamérica, como el que más. Y en el momento en que fuera necesario, estaría dispuesto a entregar mi vida por la liberación de cualquiera de los países de Latinoamérica, sin pedirle nada a nadie, sin exigir nada, sin explorar a nadie. It is no secret that I was born in Argentina. I am Cuban and I am also Argentinian. And with no offense intended to the illustrious members from Latin America, I consider myself as much a patriot of Latin America and of any country in Latin America as the most patriotic amongst us. And whenever it is necessary, I am willing to lay down my life for the freedom of any country in Latin America without asking anything of anyone, de demanding anything or exploiting anyone. En su tan conocido y relatado viaje juvenil, Ernesto Guevara empezó a conocer y a sensibilizarse con la situación que padecían los pobres de América Latina. During the well-known journeys of his youth, Ernesto Guevara encountered and was sensitized to the plight of the poor in Latin America. Junto con su amigo Alberto Granado, recorrió de manera singular diversas zonas de Argentina, Chile, Perú, Colombia y finalmente llegó a Caracas, la capital de Venezuela. Together with his friend Alberto Granada, Granado, he set off on his epic travels throughout many parts of Argentina, Chile, Perú, Colombia, ultimately arriving in Caracas, the capital of Venezuela. El Che volvió a Argentina y tras concluir sus estudios de medicina en junio del año 53, inició otro gran recorrido por países latinoamericanos hasta llegar a Guatemala, donde presenció la intervención estadounidense que derrocó al gobierno democrático de Jacobo Arbenz. After completing his medical studies in June 1953, he returned to Argentina and embarked on another great journey through Latin America that took him to Guatemala, where he witnessed U.S. intervention responsible for the overthrow of the popular government of Jacobo Arbenz. De allí se trasladó hacia México, donde entró en contacto con Fidel Castro, con cuyo proyecto de liberación de Cuba se identificó inmediatamente, comprometiéndose personalmente en el plan para derrocar la dictadura de Fulgencio Batista. From there, he traveled to Mexico, where he met Fidel Castro, whose plan to free Cuba immediately resonated with Che, who personally committed himself to the plan to overthrow the dictatorship of Fulgencio Batista. Es conocido por todos que el 2 de diciembre del año 1956, formando parte del grupo 82 expedicionarios bajo la dirección de Fidel Castro, actuando como médico de la tropa, el Che arribó al territorio cubano como uno de los más decididos líderes del ejército rebelde. As we all know, from his arrival in Cuba on December 2, 1956, as one of the 82 men and doctor to the troops under the command of Fidel Castro, he was one of the most re resolute leaders of the rebel army. Contra la imagen que muchos pretenden forjar del Che Guevara como un aventurero, esta participación en la Revolución Cubana forma parte de su concepción revolucionaria latinoamericanista. Contrary to the image often promoted of Che as an adventurer, his involvement in the Cuban Revolution was part of his Latin Americanist revolutionary design. Por este mismo ideal es que decide dejar Cuba y dirigir un grupo revolucionario en Bolivia, desde donde pensaba desarrollar un proyecto liberador de todo el sur del continente. For this very reason, he decided to leave Cuba and lead a revolutionary group in Bolivia, where he intended to devise a plan to free the entire southern continent. Sobre su pensamiento latinoamericanista, se recogen numerosos relatos de sus viajes, sus discursos y sus cartas. His Latin Americanist ideology is recorded in many of his travel, journals, speeches, and letters. En su discurso en Punta del Este, denunció el carácter imperialista del proyecto de la Alianza para el Progreso, versión anterior al ALCA, inspirada en la doctrina Monroe. De tal manera, el pensamiento del Che se inscribe como una de las fuentes inspiradoras del ALBA, Alianza Bolivariana para los Pueblos de Nuestra América. 
In a speech delivered at Punta del Este, he condemned the imperialist nature of the Alliance for Progress, a previous vision of the FTAA. That was inspired by Monroe Doctrine. In this regard, Che Guevara's philosophy is enshrined as one of the sources that inspired ALBA, the Bolivarian Alliance for the Peoples of our America. Su convicción latinoamericanista era expresión de superación de la explotación imperialista mediante la unión revolucionaria de los pueblos de nuestra América. His Latin Americanist conviction was an assertion of the triumph over imperialist exploitation through the revolutionary bond of the peoples of our Americas. El Che Guevara entendía que el imperialismo era el principal enemigo de los pueblos cuando luchan por su libertad. Che Guevara understood imperialism to be the main enemy of the people in their fight for freedom. Cito al Che. He quoted, Porque es la naturaleza del imperialismo la que bestializa a los hombres, la que las convierte en fieras sedientas de sangre, que están dispuestas a degollar, asesinar, a destruir, hasta la última imagen de un revolucionario, de un partidario, de un régimen que haya caído bajo su bota o que lucha por su libertad. Y recordemos siempre que no se puede confiar en el imperialismo por ni tantico así, nada. Because it is in the nature of imperialism that turns men in animals, making them bloodthirsty beasts, ready to slit throats, murder and eradicate the very last vestige of any revolutionary or supporter of a regime that fell under its boot who fights for freedom. And let us always remember, imperialism cannot be trusted, not even in the very least. Este es un extracto del discurso que pronunció en noviembre de 1964 en la ciudad oriental de Santiago de Cuba. That was just an abstract that was taken from the speech delivered in November 1964 in the eastern city of Santiago de Cuba. El ejemplo de su lucha y de su pensamiento es guía para los hombres y mujeres que luchamos por la unidad de nuestra América. The example of his struggle and philosophy serves as a guide to the men and women who struggle for unity in our Americas. Con el comandante Che Guevara, desde la revolución bolivariana que no se rinde ni ante amenazas imperiales, ni ante misiles, ni ante sanciones, decimos, patria o muerte, hasta la victoria siempre, venceremos con el Che. With Commanda, <laughs> With Commanda Che Guevara, we say, in the Bolivarian Revolution, together, or uh, fatherhood, or homeland, or death, uh, uh, ever onward to victory, we will achieve together. Thank you very much, Comrade Ambassador Kuromoto Godoy. Now, remember when I said earlier that we are living in history right now, in this moment? I do not know if Comrades remember just this year when the United States along with some of its allies in Latin America, were trying to do some maneuvering in the OAS. As recent, mm -hmm. yeah, okay. I was reading this biography on Che, A Revolutionary Life by John Lee Anderson. It's an interesting um, biography of, of Che. And I came across an interesting paragraph. Now remember what I just said about the machinations by the US and its allies in the OAS concerning the Bolivarian Revolution in Venezuela. Hear this. In a letter to his family, he predicted, and hear this quote, in the upcoming OAS conferences of Caracas, the Yankees will set all their traps to impose sanctions in Guatemala. So familiar, sanctions? It is certainly true that the governments bow to them, and their battle horses of Perez Jimenez, Odria, Trujillo, Batista, Somoza, these are the names of the dictators of the American allies. That is to say, among the reactionary governments, the ones that are most fascist and anti-popular. So we see Che reflecting on the role of the OAS the U.S. imperialism, but how they maneuver and use the OAS against progressive revolutionary, um, revolutions. In that case, it was Guatemala. Now, in our lifetime, it's Venezuela. So, of course, I think we should all 
say that we stand in solidarity with the Bolivarian Revolution of Venezuela in the spirit of Che Guevara. The next, of course, this comrade who has spent all his life as a political activist, but not just any political activist. And he isn't that. I don't like when I hear people talk about him as a politician. He's not a politician. He's a radical revolutionary. And I think we have to acknowledge him for that because he has stayed the course for all, through many things, through many things, through the good times and the, even the rough times. And he continues to believe in social justice. He continues to believe in humanity. He continues to believe in the potential of ordinary people to transform their own lives. And I think we all look forward to hear his reflections on the impact, on the life and impact of Commandant Ernesto Che Guevara. I'm talking about Comrade David Abdullah. Thank you very much, Thank you very much Ozzy. Ambassadors, colleagues on the panel, sisters and brothers, comrades, all good evening. Um, when Ozzy said we were going to have these reflections, he said we were really going to be sitting in a more informal way and not at a podium and so on. It was supposed to be just a few minutes, you know, to share some reflections. So um, what I'm going to do is try to uh, look at some of the issues surrounding Che's life, his struggles, his ideas, and political activity in Trinidad and Tobago, um, and discussion around strategy and tactics as they were taking place a couple years just ahead of me, just ahead of my political activism, but which I was tangentially involved in. And I'll start with that, and I'll look at some of the universal, some of the universal um, ideas of Che and their relevance to where we are today. So the reason why I'm saying this is because Che died um, 50 years ago, 1967. Three years after that was 1970. And for the younger ones among us, or those who don't necessarily um, recall those events, even though they may have been around, Shortly after the 1970 mass uprising, which started on the um, 26th of February, and which came to an end in terms of street demonstrations and so on, and which came to an end with the state of emergency, the first state of emergency was on the 21st of April 1970, and the arrest and political detention of many individuals, including the President General of the Office Workers Trade Union at the time, Comrade George Weeks, and a number of other comrades from the OLV2, Clive Nunes from the Transport Industrial Workers Union, and then the popular leaders um, who, we, who we know and recall, um, Gettys Granger, he was then, No McCandle, Dagger, Dave Dabo, um, Kafra Kamban, and, and many others. So, after the first state of emergency came to an end um, later that year in 1970. There was, of course, a second state of emergency which began, which many don't remember, which began in late 1971 and finished in early June 1972. Incidentally, it was ended um, just after the Industrial Relations Act was passed, um, which is significant. And so, in that second state of emergency, most of those, or many of those who were detained, including Common Weeks and others, who were detained in the first emergency, were once again detained in the second emergency. And after that second state of emergency, which ended, as I said, in 1972, um, there developed, because we're talking about just a few years after the murder of Che, so we are talking contemporaneously. It's like us in 2017 talking about the elections of 2010, which was seven years ago. Um, as long as, as, soon, as short as goes that may seem, it was just the other day. So we are talking about periods of time in which people's consciousness and activism would be impacted upon by events that happened contemporaneously. And so 1972 um, comes just five years after 
chase death. And one of the main things that was taking place in terms of the debate about bringing about change in Trinidad and Tobago at that time was how to bring about the change because the mass struggles on the streets of 1970, which were massive, there were demonstrations which had many tens of thousands of people marching day after day after day from the 26th of February right down to the 20th of April. So for a period of, of, of two months, um, huge street demonstrations involving a very large percentage of the population. Um, and that did not bring down, and on top of that, of course, um, the mutiny in the army led by Rafiq Shah, Rex Lasalle, Mike Bazi, three young lieutenants. So the army had, had fractured as well, and therefore the possibility of state power as expressed in the um, section of the state, the army, um, that was on the agenda. And, and let us be clear that what happened was not simply a response to the demonstrations on the street. Rafiq and Rex had visited Cuba well before 1970. Um, they traveled out of Trinidad to London and went supposedly on holiday driving through France and ended up probably in Spain and then flew down to Cuba to meet with the comrades in Cuba. So that was something that was in their mind and in their consciousness about what they were doing politically. And they had relations with sections of people who were on the outside who were also armed and so on. And there was a, a famous story um, well, right, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go to that since Rafiq is still alive. Dhaka so now passed away. So the issue, therefore, of how to bring about fundamental change in Trinidad and Tobago was very much an issue that was alive in the minds, not just of ordinary young people, but also of, of the leaders of the, of the progressive and revolutionary movements as they then were. And there were different debates because, of course, after the first emergency and before the second one and after the second one, there was a lot of repression by the state forces. The police were harassing young people on the block because on the block, um, in that period leading up to 1970 and afterwards, the blocks of then were not the block of today when the bad boys or the gang leaders and so on controlled the blocks and engaged in criminal activity. On the blocks leading up to 1970 and just afterwards, young people were reading Che and Fano and Mao Zedong and, and all of the other um, writings of black power, writers of Eldridge Cleaver, Sol and Ice and so on. That was what was being read and therefore there was a lot of of, of fervor and a rise of consciousness and so on about the need to, to bring down the system, change the system. And so emerging in the early 70s, um, after the second state of emergency, was armed struggle in Trinidad, not Tobago, but in Trinidad, and so on with the National Union of Freedom Fighters, NOF. And many young people don't know about that, and many of us may have forgotten about it or choose not to think about it. But there were people, young people, um, who were committed to armed struggle and therefore engaged in, in what they understood to be guerrilla struggles up in the hills and so on, and sometimes coming down into the town to engage in, in various acts, including a major bank robbery on Tragridge Road, what was Barclays Bank then now Republic Bank on Track Ridge Road. And some were at university, some were students, some were working, um, some were, many of them, middle class, went to the best secondary schools, came from Woodbrook and, and, and so on, um, and Belmont and other communities, and were part of, of NUF. And of course, NUF was defeated by the police, um, Randolph Burroughs and the Flying Squad, militarily defeated them, killed many of them, many people were jailed. And during that period of NUF, a number of comrades, including comrades who were ahead of me politically in age and so on, Teddy Belgrave, I want to mention in particular, Teddy passed away, would have been engaging in discussions with 
enough about strategy and tactics of bringing about revolutionary change. And it, it, it therefore raised the question of whether the chase strategy of guerrilla struggle of small groups of very committed comrades engaged in guerrilla activity could bring about change in Trinidad and Tobago. And what was the relationship between them and the masses of people on the ground? And within enough, um, there was also a debate between the, the, the flats and, and the hills. The hills, I wasn't part of enough, but I'm sharing what I heard and learned and so on. And the flats, of course, were the brothers on the, in the towns and, and, and that kind of thing, and the sisters engaged in political activity. And the people in the hills were those who engaged in the guerrilla struggle. So I, I just want to set that, that context uh, because, because these ideas of Che were being debated real time, if you wish, in that period. And so I'm just going to quote, I'm not going to go on for much longer, I just want to quote um, a couple things from, from Che about, about struggle um, and, and then close with some of the, his ideals. So he, he writes um, in, in, a, in a work called Guerrilla Warfare Method, almost immediately the question arises, is guerrilla warfare the only formula for seizing power in the whole of America? Or at least, will it be the predominant form? Or will it simply be one of the many forms used in the struggle? And in the final analysis, it may be asked, will the example of Cuba be applicable to the actual situation of other parts of the continent? In the course of polemics, those who advocate guerrilla warfare are often accused of forgetting mass struggle, almost as if guerrilla warfare and mass struggle were opposed to each other, the flats and the hills, if you wish, in Trinidad. Um, we reject this implication. Guerrilla warfare is a people's war, a mass struggle. To try to carry out this type of war without the support of the population is to court inevitable disaster. The guerrillas are the fighting vanguard of the people, stationed in a specified place in a certain area, armed and prepared to carry out a series of warlike actions for the one possible strategic end, the seizure of power. They have the support of the worker and peasant masses of the region and of the whole territory in which they operate. Without these prerequisites, no guerrilla warfare is possible. We consider that the Cuban Revolution made three fundamental contributions to the laws of the revolutionary movement in the current situation in America. They are, firstly, people's forces can win a war against the army. Secondly, we need not always wait for all the revolutionary conditions to be present. The insurrection itself can create them. Thirdly, in the underdeveloped parts of America, the battleground for armed struggle should, in the main, be the countryside. I'm just going to reflect on that. There are many other quotes I was going to take, but I'll take me too long. So the idea of the parts of, in the underdeveloped parts of America, the battleground for armed struggle should, in the main, be the countryside. Of course, Trinidad did not have the size of countryside as Cuba or in other parts of Latin America, or in Vietnam, or in China, where people would have been reading um, um, Ho Chi Minh and, and others, and, and Mao Zedong on, on guerrilla warfare, and so on. Um, so that was one factor that did not apply. And, and of course, he was saying here that you have to really look at the specific situation in your own country. And, and others may have tried to unilaterally take it and apply it to, to a situation that didn't exist. But one thing I want to challenge Che on here is this point he said, which is that we need not always wait for all the revolutionary conditions to be present. The insurrection itself can create them. And that is what he attempted to do, of course, in Bolivia, which did not succeed. And it is a debate that the person whose um, this auditorium is named after, CLR James, would have raised on the issue in his pamphlet, Walter Rodney and the Question of Power. Because Walter Rodney and the comrades in the WPA were doing not guerrilla warfare, but were engaged in actions against the state. Um, and it was in the context of those actions against the state that Walter was, was killed. And that discussion was the one I had with Walter when he said to me, um, just a few weeks before he was killed, that if he was killed, that might be the spark for the revolution. 
Of course, that didn't happen. And so, and so CLR James said, you cannot, a few individuals cannot make the insurrection. You really have to wait for it. And, and that is a debate, I suppose, that we have to have in terms of how do you bring about change. I also recall Fidel, given the change circumstances in the world, at a major conference in Havana saying, um, in the presence of people from representatives of FARC and other guerrilla movements saying that in his view, in his view, the, the process that was successful in Cuba in the 50s leading up to January 1st, 1959, of armed struggle and so on, was no longer possible in this era of the world and that therefore we have to bring about revolutionary change by other means. Um, and he said it with all respect, he said, I think I know something, as Fidel is speaking, I think I know something about, about guerrilla struggle and armed struggle, but that, that period now, what happened with us is no longer possible for the rest of Latin America and the Caribbean. And so what we have to ins get instilled in us is the essence of what Che was about. And, and so I'm going to end with that in terms of his ideals when he said, um, when he said that the, the point that Ozzy was making, um, but he didn't have the actual quote, so I'll quote it. At the risk of seeming ridiculous, let me say that a true revolutionary is guided by a great feeling of love. It is impossible to think of a genuine revolutionary lacking this quality. Perhaps it is one of the great dramas of the leader that he must combine a passionate spirit with a cold intelligence and make painful decisions without contracting a muscle. Our vanguard revolutionaries must idealize this love of the people, the most sacred cause, and make it one and indivisible. They cannot descend with small doses of daily affection to the level where ordinary men put their love into practice. In these circumstances, one must have a great deal of humanity and a strong sense of justice and truth in order not to fall into extreme dogmatism and cold scholasticism into an isolation from the masses. We must strive every day so that this love of living humanity will be transformed into actual deeds, into acts that serve as examples, as a moving force. And then he went on to say this, If his revolutionary zeal is blunted when the most urgent tasks are being accomplished on a local scale and he forgets his proletarian internationalism, the revolution which he leads will cease to be an inspiring force and he will sink into a comfortable lethargy which imperialism, our irreconcilable enemy, will utilize well. Proletarian internationalism is a duty, but it is also a revolutionary necessity. And so, we could take those ideas from Che, love for humanity, strong sense of justice and truth, not seeking to fall into isolation from the masses or into extreme dogmatism and cold scholasticism, not engaging condescendingly with small doses of daily affection and maintaining at all times proletarian internationalism. I think that those ideas of Che are universal. We could always debate strategy and tactics at given moments, but the ideals are universal. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade David Abdullah, for your reflection. I think one of the things we're going to have to leave here this evening to think of, thinking about is reflected on Trinidad and Tobago, inequity, inequality that exists, and think about in a deep and fundamental way, how do we bring about fundamental change in Trinidad and Tobago? How do we bring about a revolution here? And I think your end point about the essence of, of Che, and just to repeat them, great deal of humanity, strong sense of justice and truth, no, a key um, connection with the masses, and of course, making sure we don't fall into extreme dogmatism. When I think of these ideals, as Che described, I actually think of Maurice Bishop. I think of Maurice Bishop. 
But maybe I'm wrong. So let's hear from someone who knew him and from someone who has been part of that very important project here in the Caribbean. And I think I, I, I would just like to say that we in the progressive movement must never, ever forget Maurice Bishop and the Grenadian Revolution. And here to share, <laughs> never, and to share her reflections about that experience is none other than our comrade, Merle Hodge. Comrades, good evening. Um, well, it's, it's amazing. A lot of what I have here went, you know, went, happened in, in all the speeches made before, but, but I'll still say it because the, the similarities are remarkable. Um, I would like to refer to one of the many slogans and rallying cries of the Grenada Revolution. <laughs> sorry, all right, good. Um, sorry, I have to start over, or you heard what I said to begin with? Go ahead, yeah. go ahead. Okay, right, the, the slogan, forward ever, it's too low, you know. <laughs> forward ever, backward never, which, I, which has survived, you know, years after the, the end of the Grenada, well, not the end, the, the fall, the destruction of the Grenada Revolution. It has survived in, in, the, in the whole Caribbean, and I've, I've heard it used elsewhere in, in progressive gatherings, and I think that is very um, important. It's an important sign of the, the continuity of, of revolution. Because as far as I'm concerned, the fall of the Grenada Revolution is not to be seen in the long run as any step backwards. Struggle is incremental. Struggle adds to itself as the, the generations move on. There are some leaders you cannot kill, and there are some developments in human history that you cannot successfully turned, sorry, turn back because the work is continued by others. The this, this spirit is constantly revived and renewed and constantly we make changes as to how we are going to realize the ideals that, that we have. Maurice Bishop and the Grenadian Revolution made such an impact on the imagination of Caribbean people that we can be sure that the aspirations of this revolution have not died. When I visited other Caribbean countries during the period of the revolution, I was amazed at the extent to which people in the region, people all over the region, understood almost instinctively what was going on there. They knew exactly what was going on and they, they understood that it was a step in the right direction. But, um, in spite of the ongoing propaganda campaign waged by Reagan and company against Grenada, with of course the, the collusion of certain parties across the region, including right here in Trinidad and Tobago. In the subsequent history of Grenada, it does not seem to me that there has been any wholesale policy, any wholesale move from the level of officialdom to root out the memory and the legacy of the revolution. The mere fact, it seems to me, that in response to popular opinion, the new airport was named by a new government, was named after Maurice Bishop, I think that that points to a willingness to build upon the gains of the revolution rather than seek to reject and root it out. Outside of Grenada, the vision remains alive in the heads and the hearts of the many people from the Caribbean and elsewhere, people like myself who abandoned or suspended whatever they were doing in 1979 in their own country or in other countries all over the place, um, suspended, abandoned or suspended whatever they were doing and headed for Grenada to help build the revolution. Some of those who made this move were, were some of them Caribbean people living quite comfortable lives in first world countries, but they saw fit to, to 
either, as I say, abandon or suspend whatever life they were living elsewhere to come and help. Up to the last year of the revolution, people were still arriving in Grenada to offer their support, their skills, their enthusiasm. Most of, the, of these foreigners, and I'm, call, I'm using the word foreigners, but we were never treated as foreigners. Rather, we gained the honorable title of internationalist workers. But many, of, um, many people who, who had come in to help left Grenada after October 25, 1983, when Grenada came under American occupation. Not all of them left by choice. The US armed forces most generously airlifted some of us out, cleaning out the stables as it were. Now we are all scattered to the four winds, but still carrying the vision so that we have not, so, sorry, so that we have brought it to whatever we have been involved in since. We were part of implementing the revolution's vision of progress and our experience has forever influenced our perspective. And I must say that I feel very privileged to have been there and to have had that experience. Those of us who were there have seen with our own eyes some certain developments, for example, that we perhaps would, would not have imagined otherwise. Um, the, the way in which, you know, the Grenadian people were could be mobilized at the level of communities to join forces and give up their time and energy to, to improving their own lives. Grenadians are Caribbean people, so we now know that that is possible in, in the Caribbean. Um, people at um, the, the level of, of country participated with relish in, in what we what we tend to call just politics and many of us stay far from. We experienced in the person of Maurice Bishop a quality of leadership that facilitates unity, collaboration, and love of country. We have been part of the building of a more participatory system of government. When I say the building, we were only in the beginning stages, but already it had grabbed the imagination of people and they participated with, with much enthusiasm. Um, the, a, a new system of government that, that was referred to at the time as a new democracy. Because we have to understand, and I think those of us who were there understand now, that, that democracy is not one system. Democracy is a principle. Um, but traditionally, we have been taught to believe that what takes place in the USA is the system of democracy, the only one. The principle of democracy can be implemented by other systems that people build to run their own affairs. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to re resemble exactly what is going on in the, the, the US, but this is the propagandist um, regime that we, we live under. That, I, I, when I say re regime, I, I mean in, in, the, in the whole world. They have convinced the whole world that what they are doing is democracy. And Lord, look at what happened to that democracy now. <laughs> Upside down, All right? And, and we we su supposed to fall in line with that, All right? In the Grenadian Revolution, we saw remarkable progress in education, infrastructure, the provision of health care, agriculture, industry, and other areas of national development. Um, we also learned, and we perhaps learned it for, for, for good. We, we realize now, and this is one of the things that David um, dwelt on, and I was very you know, happy to hear that, that, that he's of that view as well, and that other people of, you know, who, who have thought the thing out um, are, are also um, of that view. Because we, we learned that for sure the U.S. will not anytime soon allow any process like Grenada's process to take place. They will harass us and they will undermine us and they will use everything they can to um, destroy our, our efforts, right? Especially if the process is ushered in by the use of arms, right? 
as they, of course, in the US, ushered in their destiny as an independent country by the use of arms. Of course, taking up arms is not a necessary part of, of revolution. And even if a revolutionary regime is put in place by election, we know that, that the US will have no qualms about destroying it. All right, they, they've, they've, had no, they've had no qualms about going in and undermining Venezuela, for example. We can say goodbye, and I was glad to hear that, um, I was glad that David quoted from that part of, of um, Shea's an analysis. We can say goodbye to armed insurrection in order to get progressive government. We, we would be dead in the water, right? Um, of course, we know, and again, David spoke about this, so I perhaps don't even need to, to, to repeat it, that, that we, we have to find other means of infusing revolution into what, what takes place into, um, in our country, infusing our ideals, you know, ideals of, of equity, of the, the, the equitable distribution, the, inequ the equitable use of our resources, for example, more participatory governance, for example. All of those things will now have to be done by by other means, they, they will have to come out, for example, come out of our ongoing activism for, for the changes that we would like to see. Now, part of the lasting impact of the Grenada Revolution is the memory of a leader with certain outstanding qualities. And here again, the descriptions of Che, you know, it's almost as though Maurice Bishop was his inheritor because the, the, the descriptions of, of Che's um, spirit and his, his, his behavior, his, his way of life, those things are very, very similar to what can be said of, of Maurice Bishop. He was perhaps in the first instance um, a visionary, but not a visionary who is inclined to impose any ready-made vision on the people that, that he led. One of the reasons for the conflict that brought down the revolution was that all along in Grenada, in the Grenadian Revolution, all along there were two tendencies within the leadership group. A doctrinaire, dogmatic, hell-bent philosophy that was willing to ride roughshod over people and people's comfort towards the fulfillment of goals. And, and when I say comfort, you know, the, the people's spirit, how, how people felt about what, you know, what, about how they were handled, about how the country was handled. All right, so, so there, there was that hell bent on just fulfilling ideals, right? The other um, tendency was the willingness of a uh, Morris Bishop to move at a pace determined by the people, guided by their support for certain goals. The input of the, of the wisdom of people into how things were done. People's level of comfort with the process of improving their lives. Secondly, he was a leader with clean hands. Maurice Bishop was a frugal person. He lived simply. He had no extravagant tastes that had to be fed from the people's treasury. He was not in this struggle, as so many third world leaders have turned out to be. He was not in the struggle for the opportunity to live high off the hog and amass a fortune that could be secreted away to foreign banks. Um, he was a leader haunted by the levels of poverty, limited access to education, the abuses of the Gary regime, and other indicators of underdevelopment in which the people of his country lived. And here, too, I am reminded of one of the, the things that was said about Che, that he had love of, of the, the, the people. This was most certainly um, a fundamental characteristic of Maurice Bishop. His ambition to help bring about improvement in the lives of people is what motivated this leader not the desire to gain and exercise personal power. 
the Grenada Revolution under the leadership of Maurice Bishop injected many hopeful possibilities into the Caribbean consciousness. That revolution remains an indelible mensch, sorry, benchmark in, the, in, in our pursuit of progressive development in the Caribbean. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Mulhaj, for sharing your reflections on the Grenadian Revolution and the life of Maurice Bishop. And it's all about creating a different world, creating something that brings about social justice, equity, the equitable distribution of resources and wealth. Um, it's about shattering a system that ensures the domination of a 1% over the rest of us. Couldn't help but say that. The next speaker who will share his reflection is a young comrade, a young activist. And, and you know, one of the things uh, that you see lately, and you really wonder how would Che feel about it, being a strong socialist and Marxist that he is, you see Che t-shirts everywhere. It's like one of the most sold consumer goods now. Che t-shirts, bags, caps. I mean, sometimes I, you know, walking on the road and I see like a whole sort of people with Che t-shirts and I keep wondering to myself, I wonder if they know what that is about, right? Or it just looks like a cool t-shirt to wear. But in the end, if we want to bring about revolutionary change, if we want to bring about radical change, it has to be with young people. As I said, and I give you the, 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 the age, Che was a very young man. He was in his mid-twenties, all right? Um, Fidel and they, by the time the Cuban Revolution came around, these comrades were in their early 30s. Early 30s, all right? A lot of young people play a very active role in building and defending and strengthening the Bolivarian Revolution. So young people are a very important part of this process. So let us hear from a young comrade his reflections on the life and impact of Che Guevara. Comrade Kevin Agustin. Thank you, Comrade Ozzy. Um, pleasant good night to head table. Uh, pleasant good night to everyone who made it here. Um, I think you're making that statement that seeing the Che t shirt everywhere is sort of like a, a, a Jesus Christ for the freedom fighters. You know, and he, he live on forever. Um, but being a young person, um, you know, Comrade, he called me and he said, you know, he want a young person to give reflection on how uh, Commandante she has impacted my life. Um, for my 32 years, um, I lost my mom early. Coming from a poor background, I was searching. Uh, in, my early in my early teens, I was searching for something, fatherless home, Streets bad, influence. Um, so I found solace in the schoolyard and the library. Um, being inspired by my English teacher, uh, she always encouraged me to read. But not just read, read about things you love. Um, and from that, I always had a question of why why are there poor people? Why are there rich people? Why do some enjoy these things while others don't enjoy it? And starting to get involved in youth work with the Trinidad Youth Council, I had the great opportunity to spend a lot of time at the OWTU library. And I came across a book, um, Cuba's Internationalist Policy of 1970 to 1975. And starting to read that book, it really shaped my whole level of consciousness when it comes to understanding imperialism and understanding the, the, the ills of society that affects so many, while so little tend to benefit. 
off of the majority. Um, and from reading that book at the OWT library, it really started to draw me towards a lot of things that she was saying, because I felt connected to what he was saying. I felt that connection in terms of being a people's person, being able to share and call each other brothers and sisters, whether we be from whichever part of the world. We are all connected, and we all need to support each other in love. Um, carrying on, you know, the struggles as a young man growing up, still searching for, for, for that overall ideal or what you want to be, or these sorts of things, um, you would get weary. And I, I always, I, when he called me on Saturday, you know, I was like, where is he? Reflections at G Y way, way. I'm a thinking. So I really sat down and I, and I started to build in myself like, how did he really impact me? And I, I started to remember being with the Trinidad Youth Council, traveling from Santa Cruz from work, going to Guaya to meet a group of people by taxi only to reach there and there are only two persons, the organizer and, and his cousin. <laughs> Obviously you're pissed because you're leaving Santa Cruz to go Guaya by public transport, ain't no easy task. But then I, I, I say to myself, I want to be a revolutionary. What would she do? I always, question myself or remind myself what were the revolutionary leaders that I grew up reading and learning about would do. We cannot give up in the struggle. That is something that I have learned from Shay's life. He didn't have to go to, to Africa. He didn't have to go to Bolivia. He didn't have to do all the things he did. They won the revolution. He could have stayed in Cuba and enjoyed the, 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 the wealth of Cuba. You know, he, he, he was a son of the soil now, you know. But he believed in freedom, he believed in justice, he believed in equality, and he pursued that. And that has always inspired me. You know, we have to keep pushing on. And our sister nation, Venezuela, um, as well, Hugo Chavez has also given me a, a, a sense of hope and a belief that strength in numbers, <laughs> always. I am always, I take these, these revolutionaries as my superheroes. Because when I, when I read about them, I hear, I feel the sense of, you know, if you, if you think of Superman or Batman or any one of these superheroes, they're always fighting for the poor and ill-treated. And these, when I read the stories and I read the lives of these people, they are always fighting the good fight. They're always fighting the bad people, the imperialist nation, United States. And all my life, I cannot understand, as uh, Ms. Hodge had said, you know, they call it democracy. But we are seeing what democracy is now. People who have supported this nation is now turning around and holding their heads. Now we have to really, really build on what is happening internationally. Um, even in Trinidad and Tobago, not going too political, but we are seeing the trickle-down effect of what the US imperialist state is calling democracy. Our national budget was recent, and it's not something, it's a very, very bad taste in our, all of our mouths. And I just want to say to comrades here, as a young person, I'm inspired by you all. <laughs> the, trade union, the trade union movement gets the most amount of bashing, but without the working class. 
how can the economy thrive? It doesn't have to do anything with politics. But we are seeing time and time again the working class of the world, the poor of the world that generate the wealth of the world is ill-treated, is pushed to the side, is bad taught. But I just want to remind you all, when you all are at that place and you feel defeated, ask yourself, what would she do? Thank you very much. After that last intervention, I think there is so much hope for a revolution in Trinidad and Tobago. Let's thank the young comrade. Really powerful. Very, very powerful. And it was genuine and honest. Genuine and honest. And I think that is key, another set of key principles um, for the revolution. All right, honesty and truthfulness. All right, I want to open the floor right away. So how are we going to do? I'm going to take my seat. We'll have the um, other mic. Oh, I am not sure we supposed, may have supposed to have one more mic for, yeah, there it is. I just need someone to get it. <laughs> what would Che do? <laughs> Thank you very much, comrade, brother. All right. We've heard these reflections, but it, it, I want also to hear from the audience as well. Anyone here who may have their own um, reflection that they would like to share. We see one, two, hand to the back, Hollis. And I like it, two women to start it off. I think that, that says something, well, I think that says something, doesn't it? Good evening, everybody. Um, I had the Your name? Sorry. Nicole Hendrickson, activist. I had the pleasure and honor of being in Cuba in 2010, 2011. Um, as part of the Trinidad Youth Council at the time and being, um, seeing some of the articles that she would have used, uh, worn and stuff like that, seeing the monument in the capital. Um, and really also um, thinking about Che in a way that allows all of us, I think, to realize that we don't have to stay in our countries to do good. I know a lot of us do want to start here, but I think when we, when we want to do good, I think we also sometimes need to look outside. But I really wanted to confirm through Merle that you confirmed for me something that I thought about in terms of Maurice Bishop, that I had, I had always, thought about him in a way that he understood the English-speaking Caribbean within the context of being sandwiched in certain ways um, with Latin America and Central America and South America. And my thought was that he couldn't do a revolution through arms, that the way he made a decision to do it was through minds. And he used women and children, I think, in terms of the ground level to build that up. And I think you confirmed that for me in your speech today in terms of how he made a decision that he understood what the English-speaking English Caribbean needed at the time coming after some of those other insurrections that we would have had in Latin America, Central America. So I just wanted to thank you on that. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. ODWT, Labor Relations Officer. I just wanted to comment on two things that I heard here this evening that really, really moved me in a, a deep way. The letter that was sent by Che to Fidel and the young son of mine there. <laughs> See, I'm hearing you say that, you know, you came from, a, you lost your mother early. And I think you deserve a special round of applause for choosing not to be taken up by the streets, but to educate yourself and be an, an example to in society today. Congratulations, my child. You keep on pressing on. Thank you. Thank you very much, Comrade Joanne Phillips. Um, um, reflections are still open for the floor, but if anyone from the panel would like to also, you know, just 
say a few things, please feel free to do so. Did I see a hand? Not as yet. All right, let me just ask um, Merle, uh, if, if you may, because I think you said something and I don't want it to be taken for granted when you said that some, some of you all abandoned and suspended what you would have been doing in the comfort of your home oh, well, and I in your jobs. Yeah, no, sorry, I didn't say any comfort. I said some people were living a comfortable life in metropolitan countries. In metropolitan so that, countries, yes, right. Yes. And they decide that it is that decision to go and support the building of the revolution. What, what would have been some of the things that said to, to, to all of them, listen, we have to go down there and help? Yes. Okay, but is this all? Yes. Yeah, okay, but in, in, in my case, I, I knew the NGM people, I knew Jackie, Jackie Crep. I was, was quite close to Jackie. And so, so, and I had been, you know, to, to Grenada a couple of times. Um, okay, people simply saw the progress that was being made, and they also saw the counter campaign. Right? And as I said in the talk, people were arriving at the end. There were, there were a couple of people I know who had, to, who had just arrived with their whole family and had to, to you know, when the Americans were, were kind of carting us out, had to get their children and, and get on that plane and they had just arrived. So people, they, they, people were simply impressed with, with what was going on there. Some visited and went home and fixed up their business and came back. Yeah? Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Um, any other reflections before I? Yeah, okay, of course. One of those very active uh, comrades in, in revolutionary politics and in re what we call revolutionary trade unions. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to see if someone could help me on the, on the, one of the panelists, maybe David. In one of, well, in the 70s, as David did correctly say, we <laughs> reading a lot about Che. And one of the writings of Che, he specifically spoke about the worker intellectual. I wonder if anybody could give us some elucidation on that, that workers have it within their means to arise as the new intellectual in Latin America, the worker intellectual, and not wait on these uh, so-called bourgeois intellectuals to tell us what to do. And Cuba has produced that worker intellectual. So I'm wondering if anyone can help me because somewhere along, somewhere along the, the life, my life, I read about that writings of Che when he spoke about the worker intellectual. Uh, but, but what Che was focusing on a lot was, uh, of course, in those days when in the 60s, language was not gender neutral. <laughs> so, so the reference to man, of course, was not just to, to, to men, it was, it was generic. Uh, but he meant to be generic. But what, what he spoke about, so there, there was a, a particular piece that he wrote called Man and Socialism, uh, where he said that uh, what we must create is the man of the 21st century, although this is still a subjective and not a realized aspiration. It is precisely this man of the next century who is one of the fundamental objectives of our work, and so on. So what, what I think the, the idea constantly was that humanity, that humanity, um, people had to be able to, to become all that they can be and could be in terms of, of, of their capacity to express themselves and um, not only artistically or culturally and so on, but to express themselves in terms of their own human capacity and to be able to live um, together as we had spoken without exploitation. And so the, the focus was really on what was this new man and in that regard therefore that you could not look upon a worker who might be engaged in very simple manual work or even a, a worker who is engaged in, in, in higher level activity in the productive process and so on, you could not look upon them in any way lesser, as a lesser person than someone who perhaps could be defined as, as a fine mind, yes? So I think it was in the context of understanding the, and, and what, what the Cuban revolution was about, was about trying to create this new man, quote unquote, right? Yeah. Yeah. 
Thank you, um, Commander David. And I just want to say that that is an important question and point. Um, because right now, there's a whole host of bourgeois economists. And I think I, you know, we need to start a qualified thing. Because we get caught in it, you know. That's the problem. We get caught in thinking that somehow they're right. And what they're saying is correct. Because the name economist or political analyst. I think we need to start a differentiating thing now. The bourgeois economist trained in Western uh, capitalist economics. Let's just be clear what it is. And so therefore, we have to be very careful, especially in this period, especially in this period, as the economic challenge becomes more and more um, tense. This attempt by that class to convince us, the working class, that their prescription is correct. I think that is Im important. Thanks for that, comment. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Good, up, good night, all the, on the head, head table. Um, for me, um, Neville Warner is in it. Yeah. And I, I just want to talk about in terms of the, the Grenadian um, experience. Um, as one who had spent some time during the period of the um, Grenadian Revolution, and would have felt the energy of the Grenadian people during that period, and would have also attended two of the, um, the Martitian celebrations. One of the significant things for me was the, and I don't know if we had any recording of it, uh, Moise should have come here in 1983, right before he died. And there was a, he had a, a major speech at the auditorium in UE. And I remember the significance of it turned out. And, and my experience was that the Caribbean at the time, because of the experiences we have had in terms of the, the sort of economy and the kind of um, politicians we would have had experience, and there were people feeling the need for something different to what they were experiencing because they had a situation like in Jamaica where they've had um, PNP and GLP, so there was no, and there was no major difference. And for me, it was not by accident that the destruction of the revolution came at the time that it came. Because I believe that had not that um, had happened at the it happened, there would have been, in my view, significant changes in, the, in terms of the English speaking kind. And they would have come not by, by bullets, but it might have come by the battle. That's my contribution. Thank you. I don't know if anyone, that's an interesting point. I don't know if anyone from the panel, that, that question of had that not happened in 83, the possibility that uh, several other Caribbean countries would have also gone the way of progressive politics. I think that's an interesting point posed. Um, Mike again is still, oh, sure, go ahead, come on. Yeah, good night. Um, just come to make a comment, you know, um, today, Nigel, why is my name? Um, Chinma, would love it to you. Um, just want to make a comment here in the fact that all of us here as activists and members of progressive movement as we reflect on the life of you know Che we need to also reflect on our life and what is our major contribution. Is our contribution just you know at a, a minimal level or we need to take at the maximum level or we just go into the motion you know because you can't come to these 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 you know forums and hear good and hear good and say it was nice and it was nice and then what's after that, that we live our life normal, you know? What is going to be our contribution onwards? Are we going to step up or are we going to continue the same way as we continue to talk about others other than we move to higher time? Thank you very much. On the other hand, of course, anyone from the panel, including our ambassadors, can also make an intervention or answer any questions. Go ahead, comrade. Steve. Good night, Christopher Henry, Steve Walker Jr. 
I um, as I was hearing Comrade Hodge talk about the revolution in Grenada, I will have remembered as a young, out of school, a young boy, um, playing, we went to Grenada to play national team in Grenada in basketball. And before I left, my dad would have told me, because he was one who was brutalized in the 70s and he struggled. He said, make sure and meet um, Comrade Bishop, Maurice Bishop, eh? make sure and meet him. And I was, when we were lined up and he came in, I was expecting this giant of a man was a young boy, he ain't got him, he ain't got the revolution. And he was so simple and he left this impression on me that I'll never forget that you could feel the love in the man. And walking in the hills of Grenada where there were so much Cubans in Grenada, at that time they were building the airport and talking to the, the, the comrades who were the other team that because we were together and they were telling us about how um, happy they are as, as children, how happy the people was in Grenada at that point in time, the joy that came to the people through the revolution and the assistance that the Cuban was giving them um, that they would be forever grateful. And I, would st I still have friends from that time. And I left there thinking about when will we have this sort of um, revolution in China? Politics in China and Tobago is what Indian and African is about religion. So how do we, David, chart our revolution? Because it's going too slow for me. We need a revolution that has to go a little faster because we need to get rid of these people that is in power that is doing nothing for us. And we need to have our revolution. How do we start a revolution and get a revolution faster in MSJ David? Uh, we'll take about, uh, let me see. We'll take Forbes. There's another hand. Yeah, Forbes. Anybody else? All right, Forbes, come on, Forbes. Good night to all. David Forbes, General Secretary, Postal Workers Union. Just a question for Comrade David Abdullah. What is your perspective on the 1937 revolution, 1970, and 1990? Although 1990, was more of a gun battle, or it would have had gun players, so to speak. What is your perspective on that, and how um, how can we combat this issue of class struggle in Trinidad and Tobago, and by extension, the Caribbean? Um. But I'll take another question. Maybe it's also in line so that in the response we can sort of pull it together, David. All right, we have another comrade. Walter Jules, OWTU National Petroleum. Head panel, good night. Everybody, good night. My thing is, um, bear with me a little bit, because you know I'm so good at words, I see. But I want to thank the comrade to the very end for his contribution, because it's like he almost answered some questions that have been plaguing my mind for quite some time. Now, we're talking about, we sort of reflect on the life of Shea and Morris Bishop. And I'm seeing where we're talking about the, the lady, the comrade next to the young guy speaking about what they teaching us or showing us as what is democracy. In the sense that the same one percent that we're talking about, they control the media, they control what basically the young people get to see on a day to day basis. Right? And you find that like a forum like this, 
we should like more have like you know more youths who could be able to get this information that we could distinguish the one percent from the working class and how important it is for the working class to have the ideology and the the format and understand exactly I mean I don't want to be biased with it but exactly what the OWT has been pushing and trying to bring forward to our nation because when you look at it that was 50 years ago but today we actually live in that kind of and that was Cuba and America and that kind of thing but right here in Trinidad we've seen where we go in directly into that everything that has been done by the politicians or the people who could control what we hear, what we see, is like favorable for them and away from the working class, per se. So my thing is, how do we, how to say, work against the media and the 1% power in our bid to get more youths conscious of where we are supposed to be and where we are going because basically the media plays with the minds of the youths. You hear it every day. I show my comrade could attest to that. You will have a conversation and try to bring about the same settings here and they will drift and argue to the last because the influx into their mind every day on the television, the cable, the radio. How do we how do we really get the younger ones who coming up who has to take up this fight? to really take this serious and get more involved in it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, oh, OK. Uh, I think they're all still connected, so that's, that's good. Good night. Good night to the head table. Um, Sana John, OWTU, UE, activist, parent, and Hearing, hearing a lot of the comrades sitting, asking about how do we bring about a revolution for the next generation. And influence of the mind starts at home. As always, bring it back, especially in forums like this, to parents influencing. For Kevin, it was a teacher influencing and guiding you towards people like readings like Che Guevara's and going to the UWT library and sitting and filling, filling your mind not with what the media is putting into it, but filling your mind with other teachings. And as parents, as activists, we also need to fill the minds of the youth with what we believe that revolutionary spirit of Che is reflections of Che Guevara and Maurice Bishop. We need to fill their minds with those revolutionary thoughts. And that's the only way my children are here tonight, not because they didn't want to be home, but because I felt that it was important that they learn and they understand because they see mommy always in OWT, mommy always going to meetings, she always going, what is this about? And it's not just about me telling them, this is why I do it. But they hearing from others, this is why we do it. This is the history, this is the reason. And we have to keep pushing because when I leave, they have to take it up. And they must understand where the spirit comes from. All right, I don't know, I think, I don't want it to pass slightly because I think it's so, so important. The fact that you brought your three children here. Can they stand? Can your three children stand and let us recognize them? Three young people. <laughs> All right, and I think you're right. It starts so simple, right? Thank you. <laughs> All right, now I think there is a lot to respond. So here's how we're going to, to do this. It's A42, and for those of you all who know persons like myself and David, especially David, we can go here whole night. Am I wrong, comrades? Whole night, trust me. Uh, but um, there is, I know some of, most of us are parents, and we do have school in the morning, and some have traveled far. 
So I'm going to take two more comments from, yeah, yes, Shiraz, um, uh, one of the leaders from the farmers movement. I think it's important to hear the voice of farmers. We didn't hear Shiraz, and I'll take one more after Shiraz. One more? Yeah, me. All right. All right, and then Comrade John Julian, and then I'll just ask each member of the panelists to say some final words. David, I think a lot of questions came to you, so some of you have to I'll give you the kind of final say because I would like you to sort of pull it together. All right, so go. Yeah, pleasant evening, comrades, brothers and sisters. Shiraz Khan, president of the Farmers Union, activist. Um, I want to just go back a bit. The, I, I got involved in trade unionism in um, 1982 when I started to work in that place just over the highway there in there is now the Grand Bazaar. I was working there in a beer factory. And um, I got involved in trade unionism in 1982 to join the union and so on. But because you're working in a beer factory, you started to follow the things that we produce because you had to, you know, you had to partake of what you produce. Um, now I'm Muslim, I don't drink alcohol. But working there, the people that was involved in the union wasn't conscious. And it's when I went on strike, when they locked us out in 1984, is when I started learning a lot about consciousness and where we have to go and what we need to do by people like Clive Nunez and we started to read uh, Farnham and all the different literatures that we have. Today, it's difficult to get some people to actually talk on consciousness, except within the trade union movement or MSG. Why is that not happening? You have a set of bright, dunsy head people coming out of UE and confuffling my mind with dotishness. Because it seems like every time they open them out, they're bashing the trade union movement and social movement. And we have to change that. We need to start, and I, I want to thank Sima for bringing out our children, because many times they go to the trade union movement, we don't bring out the family. Right? We need to start to talk to a lot of people on one-to-one. -one. We need to start changing the conversation when we meet, to talk about women, or talk about man, or talk about Kamala and Rowley. We need to start to tell people about where we need to go. One of the things I normally will say when I talk is that I didn't go to UE, and I thank God to, I didn't go to UE. Right? Because if I had to live my life again, I would not go to UE. Because I think UE could produce a number of professional teeth. <laughs> when you look at them. Because every one of them in that parliament came from UE. They boast about their, 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 their degrees. And I think we need to take the start doing something about the consciousness in UE. I think David has, Comrade David has done a, a, some work there. And I think we all need to do some more. I think we taken a lot a, 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 a jamming for nothing. I, as an activist, have been victimized. I'm still in high court, cannot do anything. And we've taken a lot of blows, comrades. We've taken a lot of blows, and it's time that we need to build our own movement. We have the MSJ, we have the unions. I think we need to do a little more than coming here and just thinking about our own area. I think we have to go a little more out and start meeting people and talking like that, that was happening in 1970, before 1970, to bring people to our consciousness, because these forums we all, everybody here, almost everybody here is of the converted. We're not converting anybody here tonight. We need to get some people out there. We need to start to go in our communities. We need to start at where we're working and get some consciousness growing because that's the only way. Those who call it for revolution, it will start. It will st start and Comrade David always say that. The revolution starts with the revolution of the mind. And if we don't do that, don't look for no revolution. Everybody here, start talking to people. And don't talk about cricket and football. Don't talk about anything. Let us talk about consciousness and how we're going forward as a country, as a people. Thank you, comrades.
John Julian, and I see in this, and they can record it, former president of the Communication Workers Union. And you only seen one comrade here. You only seen one comrade from the Communication Workers Union executive. We talk about consciousness. We talk about wanting to see about revolution. I say to every one of you, you need to go to Cuba. You need to go. Because you can talk about it, you can say it, but if you do not go and you do not live it, you will never understand it. I remember the late Comrade Townsend, he said, Comrade Kimball, myself, Comrade Don, and Comrade Ramesh to Cuba for a two-day conference, telecommunication. Since then, we only know Cuba. The year before that, he sent a couple of us to Venezuela when they had a youth conference in Venezuela, 2005. I, yeah, I was, I was just over the youth at that point in time. <laughs> No, I actually don't come at all. I'm 41. Why are you sending me there? You is up to 35. Ask someone, I'll come. Come and I'm going to hush your mouth and go. <laughs> no, but I mean, and that was the first time that I saw Kama Chavez. And then I've gone to Mayday. I even told people, as far as I'm concerned, Fidel was my father. When Fidel died, I tell myself I had to go to the funeral and I was there. I went to the funeral in December. I asked my executive if they would sponsor me the ticket to go. They said they did not find that that was important enough. So I take my money and I went. And that's the kind of consciousness that we have to talk about. Last year, we took up to, I'm seeing somebody come right here, surely come right here, one, 32 of us went on a tour last year. We went to Havana and we made sure, and Chancho made sure that we went to Santa Clara so that we could see where the remains of Che was. We didn't care. We had to make, we had to make that trip. And this year, we had some comrades who went to the media function and I'm telling people, I want to talk about it to you. Because every year they make sure and send four comrades minimum for the meeting. We're going again next year. We're having a tour next year. And it's not a tour making any money, you know. It's not about money. It is about the consciousness that we're talking about. So if you want to go check me in. <laughs> Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Comrade John Julian. All right, I'm going to ask the panelists to give some responses. So I will start off with um, Ambassador um, Guillermo, then Ambassador Gunoy, and then I will ask um, Kevon, then Merle, and then David. Okay? Bueno, yo, nosotros hicimos nuestro pequeño discurso para conmemorar la actividad. We gave a small speech to commemorate this activity. Y realmente estamos muy satisfechos con las horas que hemos estado acá. And we are very satisfied with the time that we spent here today. Porque más allá del acto político. Because more than the political act. Estamos intercambiando ideas. We are interchanging ideas. Estamos pensando. We are thinking. Cómo hacer eh, conocer más en qué momento nos encontramos en el mundo. We are thinking, we are doing more. What can we do to, to better the world? Yo no estoy dando receta. We're not giving a recipe. Porque tengo que respetar. 
because we have to los respect asuntos internos de los países. the internal aspects or the internal conflicts of the country. Si no, mañana salgo en la prensa. If not tomorrow, he'll be at the press. Pero, <laughs> sí, es muy importante eso. It's very important. Pero aquí ha habido planteamiento muy sólido. But they have been very good, solid ideas. Sobre aspectos que tienen que conocer los trabajadores. About aspects that the workers have to know. Los dirigentes a niveles sindicales. The trade unions, the levels. Los dirigentes de las diversas organizaciones políticas. The diverse political organizations. El amigo que habló del sindicato de, de comunicaciones. The friend that spoke about the union of communications. El, Julian. Mr. Julian. Él conoce bien cómo funcionan todas las cuestiones en Cuba. He knows a lot about how everything functions in Cuba. Ustedes tienen una posibilidad. You have a possibility. Que es el intercambio intersindical. That is the interchange between unions. Habría que ver el tema financiero, que es lo más complejo. They have to, you have to speak about also the financial terms. Nosotros which is tenemos, more nosotros tenemos escuelas para capacitación de cuadros sindicales. We have schools with capacity of four unions. Claro, para las cuestiones nuestras, ¿no? For internal and issues. El partido también tiene su escuela de partido. The party also has a school. Los cuadros del Estado tienen una escuela para formar los cuadros del Estado. The, para formar los dirigentes del Estado. The, the, leader, the political leaders, to es form decir, the political leaders, they have a school for no, that as well. No de formar un líder, sino que un dirigente estatal en diversas instancias uh, in areas. va a un curso durante X meses They go to a course for X amount of months a prepararse sobre diversas cuestiones to prepare about diverse issues de economía of economics, de política en general general politics cómo, ser, cómo hacer más eficiente su labor how to make his work more efficient cómo proyectar eh, el trabajo hacia objetivo de, en defensa de la sociedad how to make uh, an objective of his uh, the objectives he can do for his job y en correspondencia por supuesto con nuestro sistema político and correspondence with the political status of the country yo recuerdo en otros años que había mucho intercambio intersindical there were previous years where there was a lot of interchange between the unions donde cada uno aprendía de cada otro. where each other learned from one another y para ustedes eso es muy importante. and for everyone here that's very important y sobre todo profundizar en la historia, and also to deepen in history in the defense of each country en medio de una situación internacional que ustedes ya conocen in the international level that everyone knows about. Con un imperialismo en una posición muy dura en este momento. The imperialism in a very hard situation right now. Con amenaza a nuestra fu a la fuerza de izquierda. With threats to the left side. Y la fuerza de izquierda tiene que estar cada vez más unidas. And the left side has to be even more unified y Por eso right este now. encuentro que hemos tenido hoy que se ha hablado de la figura de Che. And right now it's important that we spoke about Che and his figure. Hombre de virtudes ya dichas man of his own will. Y que Fidel decía, cuando ustedes se vean en una situación difícil, piensen en el Che. And when Fidel said, if you see yourself in a tough situation, think of Che. Fíjense que Che lo dejó todo. Think that Che gave it all. Y fue a cumplir un deber que él consideraba que debía cumplir. And he went to give a, a will that he, he had to. Y ahí murió. And there he died. Pero dejó, dejó su ejemplo. But he left his mark and y his ese example. es el ejemplo que ustedes seguirán. And that's the example that we must Por eso follow. yo eh, estoy muy agradecido a nombre de Cuba. In the name of Cuba, I'm very thankful. De este encuentro. For this event. Que nos indica que tenemos que estudiar. That indicates to us that we have to study. La trayectoria de estos hombres. The trajectory of these men. Ella habló de Bishop. We spoke about Bishop. Hombre también extraordinario. Mm, a man that was also extraordinary. Porque el Caribe ha tenido muchos hombres extraordinarios. Because the Caribbean has also had extraordinary men. Y hay que estudiar men. su pensamiento. Hay que estudiar su pensamiento. We have to study their thinking. Sus proyecciones. Their projections. Es decir, ustedes tienen un rico, eh, eh, re, rico recursos de conocimiento de, de líderes que han sido eh, hombres de de acrisoladas virtudes en esta, en esta área. The Caribbean has a rich uh, 
Yeah, amount of men or cultural people and historic people in the Caribbean. Por nuestra parte, Ozzy, estamos en la mejor disposición. And Ozzy, and uh, on our part, we are the disposition. De apoyarlos en las coordinaciones con nuestra con nuestra central de trabajadores. Of coordinating with our central workers. Y que ustedes directamente se pongan de acuerdo con ellos. And that you all can directly get in contact with y hacer them. Estos intercambios que son muy fructíferos. To do these interchanges that are very successful. Nosotros en América Latina y el Caribe tenemos que seguir luchando por la paz en la región. In, um, in the Latin American and Caribbean region, we have to continue fighting for peace. Yo, aunque no lo mencioné en mi discurso, muy, muy poco. Even though I didn't mention this in my speech. Nosotros en este momento nos estamos enfrentando, ustedes saben, a un bloqueo económico, comercial y financiero muy fuerte. As you all know, right now we are facing a, a blockade that's very hard on us. Y sabemos que se va a seguir recrudeciendo. And we know that it will continue deepening. Todo el mundo sabe y ha oído. Everyone knows and has heard. Los planteamientos the, del presidente de Estados Unidos hacia Cuba. The speeches that the President of the United States has given against Cuba. Y por supuesto, estamos preparados para eso. And we are prepared to deal with them. Nosotros estamos dispuestos a, a conversar lo que haya que conversar. We are at our disposition to discuss whatever needs to be discussed. Pero bajo el respeto de la soberanía y la independencia de Cuba, que no se negocie. But under the respect and sovereignty of eso Cuba, that is not negotiable. Eso es importante que lo sepan los revolucionarios. And it is important that the revolutionary people. Y ustedes, people, los amigos de Cuba también. And you as well as friends of Cuba. Y siempre vamos a pedir ese apoyo solidario para enfrentar ese bloqueo. And we will always ask for that uh, solidarity and that support from you. El día primero de noviembre se va a someter en el plenario de las Naciones Unidas. The 1st of November eh, in the uh, Assembly of the United Nations. La resolución de Cuba contra el bloqueo. The, it will be presented the resolution of Cuba against the blockade. Y esperamos contar con el apoyo como siempre. And we hope to count with the support as always. Del gobierno de Trinidad y Tobago. From the government of Trinidad and Tobago. Y el apoyo de ustedes a través de los medios. And the support from you all. Y de uh, from the media declaraciones de lo que ustedes consideren the declarations that you all consider en apoyo a eso in support of this Oye, agradecerle esta, esta posibilidad de intercambiar con ustedes just like to thank you all for the opportunity to interchange with you all y decirle que eh, no están solos you hay, are not and to say also hay todo that you are not alone hay todo un movimiento social eh, que se une cada vez más there are solidarity movements that get together all the time. Si alguien puede hablar aquí hoy de, sobre estas cuestiones, and if someone here can speak about that, es el amigo Abdullah, is our friend Abdullah, que ha estado muy al tanto de eso, that, has been, that he has been very aware of this. Y ha sido un hombre que ha participado muy activamente. And he has been a man that has been participating actively. Además de haber sido un ejemplo. More than just being an example. Como hombre del Caribe. As man of the Caribbean. Llevando adelante las la conquistas que ustedes han logrado a lo largo de muchos años. Carrying ahead what you all have been working for for so bueno, long. Eso es lo que le puedo decir muy sinceramente. That's what I have to say sincerely. En este in this aspect. Thank you. We we'll now have uh, some final words from Comrade Ambassador Godoy. Muchas gracias, Josie. Ha sido una noche de mucho aprendizaje. It has been a night of a lot of teachings and learnings. Haber oído a la señora Hodge hablar de de la gesta heroica de 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 Grenada ha sido enriquecedor. Hearing Miss Hodge speak about Grenada and Mr. Bishop has been very enriching. Desde Venezuela hemos siempre mirado a la revolución de Grenada como un ejemplo en el Caribe. From Venezuela, we have looked at the Grenadian Revolution as an example from the Caribbean. El presidente Hugo Chávez, el comandante eterno de la Revolución Bolivariana, veía en Bishop un, un, una guía, un ejemplo a seguir, y era con frecuencia nombrado en sus discursos. Eh, eh, Commander in Chief eh, Hugo Chávez, he looked at Mr. Bishop as an example, and he always mentioned him in all these speeches, and always had him in mind. El presidente Chávez fue, al igual que el comandante Fidel Castro, un creyente en la unidad de los pueblos de nuestra América y 
llevaba, llevaba tenía en su lucha esa, esa voluntad de unión para la independencia, siguiendo el legado también del, del libertador Simón Bolívar. Just as Fidel Castro, com Commander in Chief Hugo Chavez, also had that unity and that example to follow, of course, as well following um, Simon Bolivar. Esta noche, cuando nos sentamos aquí adelante, el embajador de Cuba me preguntó, ¿dónde está la gente joven? This, while we were sitting down in front there looking at the videos, the Cuban ambassador asked me, where are the young people today? Y hemos estado hablando a lo largo de la noche y se ha repetido la palabra conciencia. And we have been talking here whole night and we, the word that has been mentioned often is conscious. Y para crear conciencia necesitamos formar a esos jóvenes que son la esperanza, como este muchacho que hoy no, Agustín, y que hoy no, nos, nos contó cómo el Che impactó en su vida. Y hubiera sido tan gratificante haber visto mucha más gente joven aquí que pudiera oírlo él y seguir su ejemplo. And we have, for example, one young person here tonight that, you know, he, he spoke so well about the impact of that Che had in his life, and if other young people were here to hear him, it would have been very powerful. Entonces, el compromiso, uno de los compromisos que, que debemos, con que de, quisiéramos ver que sale cada uno de los aquí presentes, es motivar a la juventud de Trinidad y Tobago a ser una juventud más contestataria, una, 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 una juventud verdaderamente revolucionaria, porque ese hombre nuevo del que nos habló el Che no, no va a venir de otro planeta. Tenemos que crearlo, tenemos que ayudarlo a nacer, tenemos que ayudarlo a, a, que, la, a que cada país de, nuestro, de nuestra región para a ese hombre nuevo. Coming from today, what we have to take out is that, you know, we have to be our own revolutionary people. We can't expect uh, someone to come from another planet and be that revolutionary person. We have to be our own revolutionary people. El hombre nuevo del que nos habló el Che es un compromiso que tenemos cada uno de nosotros. Tenemos que ayudar a que nazca ese hombre nuevo. The new man that Che spoke about was, is within ourselves. We have to make sure that that man is born within us. Y para eso tenemos que prepararnos, leer, estudiar, viajar. Esto que hacen algunos compañeros del movimiento de sindical como Ozzy, David en su posición de líder político del MSJ, Vincent Cabrera, que viajan a Cuba, viajan a Venezuela. Y cuando regresan, esa, esa experiencia, ese conocimiento debe ser compartido pero no solamente con los compañeros del movimiento sindical, sino con la juventud. So, what from the union? So, we have to take out is, for example, Mr. Ozzy, Mr. Abdullah, Vincent Cabrera. They travel, they learn, they read, and that's what's important. We have to be able to travel and share experiences not only with the trade unions, but with everyone. Y sabemos que, como se ha dicho también esta noche, enfrentamos una, una canalla, una mediática global de ataque a las revoluciones, a la revolución de Cuba, a la revolución de Venezuela, a todo aquel país que represente una esperanza de que un, un, nuevo, un nuevo mundo es posible, inmediatamente es atacado por los medios globales. So not only Venezuela, Cuba, but any country that has a little, that shows a little hope of revolution, those are the countries that always get attacked, and we have to try to prevent this. Y la lucha es muy difícil porque los medios están en poder de las grandes corporaciones. And this is, it's very the fight is difficult because the media is controlled by big organizations, high authorities. Entonces, mientras aquí nos reunimos 50, 60 personas esta noche, los grandes laboratorios de la guerra están generando matrices contra Venezuela, contra Cuba, que terminan haciéndonos ver aquello de que el opresor parezca el oprimido y que el oprimido parezca el opresor. So, while we are all 50, 60 people gathered here tonight, all the other countries that are, are fighting against the revolution are right now thinking about how we can oppress, they can oppress us, and then the oppressors become the oppressors, and the oppressors become the oppressors. Y es un poder transnacional. And it's a transnational power. Eso no significa que nos vamos a rendir. That does not mean that we'll give up. Todo lo contrario. From that. Tenemos que comprometernos a defender los grandes logros de la Revolución Cubana y de la Revolución Bolivariana. We have to support and contribute to the 
Venezuelan Revolution and the Cuban Revolution. Y eventos como el de hoy sin duda son una gran contribución en este sentido. And events like today are a big contribution to that sense. Pero al mismo tiempo pasan cosas que no podemos entender como un foro que hubo en la Yubi hace tres semanas en la que se reunieron profesores de esa universidad y invitados extranjeros solamente para criticar, atacar y desprestigiar a la revolución bolivariana. But there are a few things that we cannot prevent. For example, um, at the University of the West Indies, they had a symposium or like a convention against the Venezuelan Revolution. Fue muy lamentable oír eh, a quienes se dicen representantes del mundo intelectual de Trinidad y Tobago atacando la revolución bolivariana sin ni siquiera conocer las cifras de inclusión social, de acceso a la educación, de acceso a la vivienda, de, constru de construcción de una nueva sociedad que, que representa la revolución bolivariana. It was very unfortunate to hear high intellectuals from Trinidad and Tobago speak against the Venezuelan revolution when they don't really know what, what it is about and then they don't know the access that the revolution gives to education, to health, to living. Y pareciera que siguen un, 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 un manual que se les da y le dice, le viene una instrucción seguramente del poder imperial que les dice simultáneo hagan esta actividad en Jamaica en la Yubi y pocas semanas después en Trinidad y Tobago. So it it's kind of seems like if they get instructions from the imperialism and they had the event in Jamaica and then shortly after in Trinidad and Tobago. Yo como embajadora de Venezuela recibí un correo electrónico con una invitación en la que me decían que si no podía ir al evento para oír lo que se decía en mi país, podía verlo en la, a través de en online. As the ambassador of Venezuela, I received an email stating that if I could not attend to listen to what they were saying, I could have looked at it through a link, an online link. El, el título era El futuro, eh, eh, perspectivas del Caribe ante la crisis venezolana. The title was The Perspectives of the Caribbean against Venezuela, the re revolution of Venezuela. Eh, tra tratando de contribuir a esa matriz de opinión de que Venezuela vive una crisis humanitaria para justificar una eventual y eminente intervención militar de los Estados Unidos en nuestra patria soberana. They are trying to justify the imperialist and the uh, military forces going into Venezuela. Por eso mienten y muestran cifras que no son ciertas. That's why they lie and they show figures that are not true. Fue lamentable oír a una señora que representa a una ONG llamada Living Waters, que supuestamente es una ONG caritativa, carismática, diciendo es que, me, que en Trinidad y Tobago viven 40 mil venezolanos ilegales. Eso es absolutamente falso, al punto que al día siguiente el ministro Edmond Dillon, el ministro de Seguridad Nacional, tuvo que desmentirlo en los medios locales. At this event, there was a person from Living Waters, a non-governmental organization, and she stated at this event that there were over 40,000 residents living in well, living Illegal. in Tobago illegally. And then the next day, the minister, Edmund Dillon, Minister of National Security, he said that was completely false. Entonces, estos son ejemplos de la importancia de este tipo de eventos como el de hoy. So this is an example of the importance of these kinds of events today. Que permite una participación abierta del público, de, 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 del más diverso público. That allow the diversity in the public y que permite el intercambio sincero entre quienes componen la mesa y quienes están recibiendo una información. And it allows the diverse and open interaction between the head table and the public. Este tipo de actividades que hoy hace, organizó la Embajada de Cuba con, la, con el Sindicato de los Trabajadores Petroleros, considero que es un tipo de actividad que tiene que establecerse con cierta periodicidad para poder hacer cierto balance en la matriz mediática contraria a las revoluciones bolivarianas y cubanas. So events like today uh, with the Cuban Embassy along with the Oil Workers Trade Union, these events work towards uh, the revolution and not against it. And we have to have more of these events. 
creo que esta es una conclusión importante. Este tipo de eventos en un espacio como este me parecen fabulosos, Osi. Te felicito por la iniciativa y queremos desde la Embajada de Venezuela ponernos a la orden contigo y con todos los que han asistido hoy para cualquier tipo de encuentro, disertación. Muchas veces nos llaman y lo hemos hecho en el pasado, hemos ido a los sindicatos a hablar de la realidad de Venezuela porque hay que hacerlo, porque los medios jamás nos darán la posibilidad de decir las cosas que aquí se han dicho hoy. So I'd just like to congratulate Ozzy for having this event and we know the Venezuelan Embassy is at the disposition of with all of you here and if all of you all need anything and we also often at the Venezuelan Embassy go on to speak at the trade unions and speak about the reality of the truth of Venezuela because the media doesn't always allow us to do so. En los momentos más difíciles, en los meses que precedieron la, la instalación de la Asamblea Nacional Constituyente. Venezuela estuvo sometida a la, actos de violencia criminal, terrorista por parte de la derecha fascista. Y fue muy importante el apoyo que nos dio el movimiento sindical de Trinidad y Tobago y debo agradecerlo en presencia de algunos de sus representantes. Fue muy importante para nosotros en esos momentos de acoso por parte de la derecha fascista contar con el apoyo decidido y valiente de todos los que están aquí presentes, de los sindicatos que están aquí presentes. So, days leading up to the uh, elections for the constituents of, Ven of the now Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela, um, they, they had a lot of uh, terrorism and acts and was in, in Venezuela itself and we have to count, we have to appreciate the support that you all have given us here in Trinidad and Tobago. The, the trade unions have shown us a lot of support. Y sabemos que, ven, que vienen tiempos difíciles, pero también sabemos que el pueblo de Venezuela ha crecido en conciencia, la juventud entiende el reto que tenemos por delante, la juventud entiende que llegó el momento del hombre nuevo latinoamericano y caribeño y sabemos que con la unión de los pueblos del Caribe, teniendo a líderes de la talla de Fidel Castro, de Che Guevara y de Hugo Chávez, tenemos suficiente bagaje histórico, eh, intelectual, humanitario para seguir adelante con la revolución bolivariana y mucha, mucha, mucho de, de, de este camino que nos queda por, transcurrir, por transitar lo podremos transitar con el apoyo del de movimiento eh, eh, sindical de este país al que tanto valoramos y al que tanto respetamos. So we know that there are tough times ahead, but with the support of all of you here and with the example that uh, Hugo Chavez, Fidel Castro, and Che Guevara have left to us, we will be able to get over all of this. And again, we just want to thank the trade unions for all their support that they have given us through this time. Muchas gracias. Thank you. Hello. I think the um, Cuban ambassador wanted to make a very two-second request. No, yo quería hacer una propuesta. Yo quería hacer una propuesta. He just wanted to make a proposal. No sé cómo se podrá lograr esto con Osi y algún otro más acá del colectivo, ¿no? We're not sure how we can yo, achieve this Yo yet. creo que, que hay que hacer como una crónica. We have to do like a chronicle. No algo largo, ni mucho menos. Nothing too long. Sobre este evento about this event. ¿Y cuál fue su what was the significance of this event? And why it was done. Llevo varios días leyendo la prensa de aquí, de Trinidad y Tobago. I have a few days reading the press here of Trinidad and Tobago. No visto, no Maybe I haven't seen Pero no he visto nada que haya hablado del 50 aniversario de la muerte, del asesinato del Che Guevara. But I haven't seen anything that mentions no the hay... 50th anniversary of the death of Che Guevara. Hay que pensar en eso. We have to think about Quizá that. algún órgano de prensa lo Maybe pueda publicar muy concreto. That can, we can release something very concrete. Y ya se puede poner alguna foto y un texto. We can maybe put some pictures and a text. que aquí se hizo un homenaje. To say that here we paid homage. Y las proyecciones que se vieron aquí. And the projections that were shown here. Okay, thank you. Um, and that, that we can, we will do that definitely, but I also know that, where, is, where did Hollis go? Somewhere. Hollis? Oh, he has, what he has uh, recruited others, but um, Hollis will also send his, this video to all of the media. Let me now ask um, Kevin. Thank you, uh, thank you, Ozzy. Um, 
I must say it's, it's an honor to be sitting at the head table with uh, these distinguished individuals. Um, I'm still learning. I'm a young revolutionary, still learning. Uh, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to share my experiences. Uh, I will share a short one uh, because of time. October 2015, I went to Brazil uh, to represent the Movement for Social Justice at the uh, Landless and Rural Workers Movement of Brazil uh, at their national school. Getting there, I didn't know what to expect, but I was excited but also nervous. When I got there, um, they spoke about militant work, right? So in my head, I was thinking, all right, things are going to get fiery, you know, we're going to see some ammunition and, you know, go to the bush and learn all kind of tactics and stuff. But for them, militant work was basic everyday chores added with reading. They read every single day. Now, for me, being a reader, it wasn't a problem. But we had comrades coming. It was an international course. And we had comrades coming from all over the world who saw it as a problem because they didn't see the, necess the necessity of reading. But when I spoke to the Brazilian people and, and the other comrades from Latin America, for them, growing up and learning of the ideals of Che and Fidel and, and Hugo Chavez, gaining knowledge and continuous knowledge is part of the revolution. You know, and, and comrade, I just, you know, he asked the question, uh, Sema also touched on it. Um, there's a quote to the, the food hall, right, and at the school. And I can't remember the, the revolutionary that said it, but it really sparked me because he said, the duty of a revolutionary is to become the revolution. And when I read that on the wall, because they have quotes all over the, the school, it kept clicking in my head. What, what, does, what does that truly mean? Like, how deep is it? The duty of a revolution is to become the revolution. Now we have our political leader, David Abdullah, at the head of the movement for social justice. But he alone cannot be the revolution. We all who support the ideology of the movement for social justice have to become the revolution in our everyday life. <laughs> Comrade Khan spoke about it. <laughs> Our young person, my friends, they get pissed at me every single time. Because my conversation is nothing other than how are we going to change what is taking place in this country? Because I don't want to grow up to reach the age of Comrade Abdullah and my children, my nieces and my nephews and my comrades, nieces and nephews and children facing 10 times worse than what we have now. So we, we have to really take a stand. You know, I, I, I received, they want to shut down the country. They sent out a broadcast. I already take it on. Five, sec, five minutes after, I'm receiving another broadcast asking for sympathy, asking for, for calmness. Why I need to do that? The, price, the, 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 the gas price in the other Caribbean countries is this, this and that. That doesn't have to do with us. And this is why I try to keep telling people when I engage in conversation concerning Trinidad and Tobago. What is happening in other countries doesn't have to, we have to deal with our own reality first. So if the oil price in another country is X, and our Minister of Finance decides to raise it to Z, we have to address that. We as the 
people of Trinidad and Tobago, not just the trade union movement, not just the oil workers, not just the steel, steel workers, all of us, not, not just the farmers, we need to unify and fight this demon. Comrades, we will have our differences. Nobody is perfect. Not everybody is going to agree on everything. But the only way you can fundamentally change the status quo of Trey and Tobago is by strengthening numbers and unifying on a common goal. And this is just my humble request of all the comrades here. I know you all struggle, you all fight, but as Comrade Cannon said, we need to start to share this information at every corner, at every second of the day. Because it, that short man, <laughs> he ain't looking like he, 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 he about compromising and, and, and being honest and being fair with the people at Trent Tobago who is generating the, the economy. Right? So I just, I just want to say thank you for the opportunity to share. Um, and really, really, let's, let's really start to believe in, in that revolution that we speak about. A revolution the OWTU has been pushing for 80 years. The revolution that the MSG has taken up since 2010. And with Comrade Abdullah before that, he's living example. He has shown his integrity. He could have stayed. Millions have disappeared. He was part of that regime, and he decided to exclude himself. And I will always respect a man who shows integrity and belief in his people. People before self. Right? So that's just my sh small contribution as being part of the panel. And as, as, as uh, the Cuban ambassador said, uh, this, this, is, this type of information needs to be shared amongst all, all people within, within our circles. Huh? Right? Thank you. Yeah. All right. I, I will be, be even brief. I will just say that I am an optimist. I see signs of, of the struggle continuing, and I will just say forward ever, backward never. <laughs> I, I, I want to agree with Merle. I do see signs of, of movement forward. Um, and we have begun that process. Let me I'm just try to tie up a couple of threads that, that comments have made. So or let me back up. Um, the question of revolution, 1937, 1970, and so on. Uh, I think 37 and 70 certainly point to the fact that you had the vast majority of the population, certainly in 37, in 70, a very large part of the population being part of a movement to bring about fundamental change. For us to challenge the system as it is, the status quo, the economic power structures, the political structures, and so on, you, you, Kevin, Kevin made the point, it has to be in the involvement of the majority of people, a very large number of people, who have the consciousness to recognize that their own lives will only get better if that system gets changed. Now, I see signs of it. <clears throat> we have begun a program, as MSJ, of Community Speaks. On Sunday, two Sundays ago, we were in the heart of Carnage, heart of Dr. Rowley's constituency. A week before that, we were up in Mount Dor. And the meetings were not large meetings, but there were very important people from the community who are active in the communities in those meetings. And the issues there were not about simply the fact that in Carinage, some people don't get the garbage collected, and then you go three streets away where the 1% live or the, the wealthy live, and their streets are nice and clean and so on. It wasn't only about the fact that when they build a water park in, Car in Chagaramas, um, people now in Carinage don't get water because the water is going 
for people to slide down the slides. So they were talking about that, but they were giving those examples to say, and the same thing was up in Mondo, to make the point about the nature of the democracy not working. In fact, the very first contribution from the community up in Mondo was this democracy is not working for us, the ordinary people in this country. And in Karanaj, people are saying, the representative system that we have, which is the democracy that we have, is not working for us. The representatives don't work for us. And I heard the very next morning, they were busy fixing potholes in some parts of the constituency. Though people don't know that it was because MSJ was up there. So there is a growing consciousness. Um, the, the, the thing, though, is that people feel isolated so that they feel in Mount Dor that it's only them feeling the problems. In Karanaj, it's only them. Or it's only one street in Karanaj feeling the problem. And not, it's not a widespread view because there's no sense of being connected. Even though there is social media and all of that, people don't feel the sense of movement and therefore don't feel the sense of their strength and the strength and the power that they have when they come together. Which power? people felt in 1937 in the absence of social media, in fact, in the absence of telephones, because ordinary people didn't have telephones in those days. You had to ride by bicycle from village to village to get the message out. And in 1970, there was no social media, but people came together and therefore felt the sense of their power, and therefore through the sense of their power, were prepared to challenge the system. And that is where we have to get to. So we have to build that movement. Now, yes, we could do website stuff and so on. So like the MSJ website, which is www.msjtnt.org, we have, and it's not populated fully yet, party school. Because maybe we can't have a party school by bringing in young people for a week or two weeks to go through a whole program of, of reading if they're not up to reading. But maybe they will learn something by the party school so that this session has to go as a YouTube on the party school. So the party school will be audiovisual as well as print, whatever other means we can get to educate and inform and, and, raise, and raise consciousness. But there is a key about Che and, and his life that I think is important, which is sacrifice, that people also have to make sacrifices. This thing doesn't fall from the sky, right? So I'm just going to read something that Che said and so on, because we talk about wanting to be revolutionary. George Weeks used to say in the Old you, and there's nobody here who would have remembered George Weeks saying that now, as far as I could see. I don't think Carver Gibson would have remembered that either. George Weeks used to buff Old Bit you members and say we'll become not revolutionary, but resolutionary. Come on, Chairman, I want to move a motion. Good at moving motion. But taking action, different story. And I make the point to the comments, and all the comments I've heard here in seminars and so on, saying that 39 years ago, the same industrial relations problems that exist today existed when I joined the union 40 years ago. 40 years now, 40 years ago. Right? Same problems. Same contract labor, same employer issues, same violation of collective bargaining, same refusal to meet and treat. Same frustration of organizing, identical problems. So unless and until we get the consciousness of deciding that we have to bring about revolutionary change by changing the system, then we will have Kevin, because I used to tell the comments that, that the young ones 30 years from now will be talking about the same industrial relations problems that they're discussing today. Right? So, so it, it, it has to be what Nigel White was saying earlier, which is that we have to make that level of commitment. So let me just read what she said. If a man thinks that dedicating his entire life to the revolution means that in return, he should not have such worries as that his son lacks certain things, or that his children's shoes are worn out, or that his family lacks some necessity, then he is entering into rationalizations which open his mind to infection by the seeds of future corruption. In our case, we have maintained that our children should have or should go without those things that the children of the average man have or go without, and that our family should understand this 
and strive to uphold this standard. The revolution is made through man, but man must forge his revolutionary spirit day by day. You know, my daughter might boof me when we come out of here and say, well, she didn't go through those deprivations. But the point is, the point is, sacrifice is part of it. So this, what is the sacrifice that we individually here have to make? We don't have to give the ultimate sacrifice that Che did. And Che was very conscious of what he was doing when he went to Bolivia and so on, when he wrote his farewell letter to his parents. Writing to his parents, he says, um, he says, it is possible that this may be the finish. I don't see it, but it is within the logical realm of possibilities. If it should be so, I send you the, a last embrace, and so on. And it, it was reflected in his letter to Fidel too, when he talked about death, and so on. So he knew what he was facing. So we are not asking anyone here <clears throat> to give their life or be killed to bring about that change. Though perhaps that could happen, but that's not what we're asking people to do. What is the sacrifice? Time. Some sacrifice of time. Right? Money too, for those who have. But sacrifice of time to build the movement. Because the movement can't build from the sky. God don't help those who don't help themselves. So what we need are soldiers, boots on the ground, not soldiers with guns to go and fight the police. That's not what we need. But soldiers who can carry the message into the communities and build the movement. We have to link up Carnage with Mount Dor. On Thursday evening, we are in Okono, Maraca St. Joseph. Okay? So come as you want to come, come up Okono, Maraca St. Joseph, and take in the Community Speaks meeting up there. Let us demonstrate by our own personal commitment and sacrifice that we are prepared to bring about change. We have to come out of our comfort zone, out of the box, out of our skin, if we want to bring about change. Can't do it by talking about it. We can't do it by being resolutionaries. We have to do, make a sacrifice of time. In the communities, building, linking, creating a movement that is powerful enough that will bring about the change that Comrade Christopher Henry said, because that is how we have to bring that change. And when we have those numbers, those numbers, because CLR James said, power lies in the streets. So those numbers in the streets will then get translated into numbers of votes that will enable us to get into government, not for office, but to take power, as Chase said we have to do, to bring about the change in the system. And I will leave it at that. Oh, I think the... Oh, okay, okay. We, we have to come out of our box to bring about change, and I think that's the perfect way to end such a powerful event. All that is left for me now is to say thanks. And I would like to, first of all, thank the embassy, the Cuban embassy, for partnering with us in this activity. I'd like to thank the ambassador, um, who is not here, Alex Gonzalez, who worked very hard. And of course, the translator, who has been working ceaselessly tonight, Naima Mohammed, other members of the staff, Marina Elena Marquez, who is also here. So let's, and of course, Mrs. Guillermo. <laughs> All right. I'd like to also thank uh, the Venezuelan ambassador for agreeing to come here and share with us. Uh, I'd like to thank her. I would like to thank the panelists, very powerful panel, Comrade David, Comrade Moore, and of course, Comrade Kevin Agostini. I would like to, to thank the OWTU Executive General Council and membership because without the approval and support of our Executive and General Council, this activity can happen. I would like to thank the Oilfield Workers Trade Union Executive and General Council. 
I'd like to also thank the staff of OWTU who assisted in preparing for this important activity. I'd like to thank Cipriani College for allowing us in this very important venue. Um, and let me just say, I, we knew that the crowd wasn't going to be big, but it was still deliberate to have it here because we wanted to honor the name of CLR James. And this kind of function, even with a, we could have had it in a smaller venue and we would have put uh, packed out the venue, but we want to keep on recognizing the great uh, revolutionary CLR James. I'd like to, to thank um, everyone here who came out and sacrificed their evening. It's now 9.37, and some of you all have a long way to go. So let us, I mean, I'd like you to thank yourselves and the children. One going to sleep, poor thing. Two more hanging in there strong. One <laughs> I'd like to thank, of course, um, a group who's here. I saw them just recently last week, and that is the Success Love Until Network. And you all didn't think I would have recognized you all, but I did see you all. And I'd like to thank you for coming. I'd like to thank um, Hollis, who will be ensuring that this goes out to the world. Let's talk, uh, thank Hollis. And I'd like to, to really thank, finally, um, a, young, a young man who has, I know would have learned a lot tonight, but if it wasn't for this young man who stayed with us right through, I would not have been able to communicate with you and you would not have been able to see the video. That's Antonio, the audio, come right to the back somewhere. All right. Um, I don't think I left out anybody. Did I? No. <laughs> I would like to really end by saying that it was indeed a, a great pleasure with uh, being with you all here this, this evening, hearing from the panel, hearing from um, the ambassadors, but also hearing from you, most importantly, and hearing how Ilche has impacted on, on your life. I hope everyone uh, reach home very safe. Uh, please, comrades all, spread the message, spread the message, spread the message. In other words, we have, as our um, comrade Abdullah said, we have to come out of the box to bring about change. Thank you, comrades. Have a safe day. And, and until we see you again.